What is going on, everybody? It is episode 206 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett. I am rather frantic because our <laughs> computer died literally just before we went live. I am here with my co-host, who is slightly less frantic than I. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Happy to be back after a great weekend, and we have a fantastic docket. And we're here with the main guest host himself. Introduce yourself, please, main guest host. <laughs> Is this a dream? Should we start throwing flower petals at you? I mean, hopefully, Cue right? the applause. Guys, main guest host here. Today's a Dane day. Wowzers. It's it really You earned day. it, my friend. Dane Font here. Marketing man <laughs> extraordinaire. And the patron saint of White Boy Summer. And, uh, sorry, I I'm going to have a particularly long intro today. I'll keep it short, though. That makes no sense, just so you know. Mm, okay. <laughs> it's going to be that kind of day. Um, as you guys know, I'm from Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico got hit by a hurricane. So good vibes to mis amigos over there. I hope, you know, it's not that bad. I but didn't I, know that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure the whole country, island, whatever, is out of electricity right now. Oh. So that's a bummer. But what's not a bummer is the topics for today. We, we have a particularly a particularly good uh, list of things to talk about today. <laughs> the first one, which for me... It wouldn't it, be it, a PCC episode without him. Yes, uh, a lot of people think <laughs> that it's just me that likes to talk about Ezra Miller. But fun fact, everyone here likes to talk about Ezra Miller because of it is course. a fascinating topic of debate where basically I actually can't summarize it in one I mean the the comment that the, the headline says messy he kind of compared himself to being a messianic figure of sorts yes. he called himself the messiah but that's almost too that's too light for how ridiculous this article is and we will get into it uh, we will read all the headlines all at once after that we are going to talk about Dane's favorite topic which is G4 TV and uh, Frost's rather colorless uh, and uh, impolite way of uh Announcing that she was still employed, basically, after uh, a yeah. bunch of layoffs on Friday. And then also G4 TV may, uh, released a statement on that. Uh, and after that, we are going to talk about the place where I want to go, and that's Donda Academy, Kanye West's own school that he has now launched, a Christian private school, and I, I, I'm, I am here for it. So if you guys are ready, we will just get right into it. Mary, are we ready? We're ready. Dane, are we ready? So ready. Or Oh, I'm sorry. Refresh. Guest host, main guest host number one, are we ready? Oh, my goodness. Now I'm more than excited. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get right into it. So basically, uh, I, instead of reading one article title for you, for Ezra Miller, I'm going to read a, 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 a plethora of them that were released over multiple yeah. Uh, for different the uninitiated. Outlets. Yes, so, so that you get an idea of just the scope of how ridiculous this article was. But the first one says, <laughs> Ezra Miller believed they were the Messiah. The Flash was Jesus of the multiverse. Report. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Ezra Miller expose, expose details uh, alleged troubling behavior surrounding arrest in 2022. And they go into talking about the various forms of uh, what I call... What would be the, the polite term for it? Uh, weaponization of identity. So we get into that. Then we also have the Flash star, Ezra Miller, claimed they would lead an indigenous revolution. <laughs> even though, wow. even though Ezra said Miller, actor has no indigenous ancestry whatsoever. None whatsoever. Uh, and then after that, we have <laughs> my personal favorite, which is that a spiritual advisor reportedly told Ezra Miller that the Freemasons were sending demons after them. Okay, so before the show began, I told you guys that I had a theory about this guy that I was going to save till the show started. Do so, tell. Okay. okay. Doesn't it seem like he's a performance artist? I think at this point, after all the Ezra Miller hootenanny, did I say it? Hootenanny. Hootenanny. Hootenanny Hoot Hoot is a good one. It's a sweet word. I, I, I think this guy is... Honestly, just trying to push the boundaries and see how far you can take this woke things. No, no, I, I think he's an abuser. I, I think he's just a, they're just a bad person. I mean, it's intertwined. Yeah. Like he knows that he gets away with his behavior because of yeah. his trendy uh, identity, the androgynous look that he's had on his come up, and um, 
how he was looked at as like kind of a provocateur at one point. You're you're right in the fact that his behavior uh, lends itself to that of a performance artist. But I also think it would be even more public facing if it was. They had to dig for a lot of this information. If he was a performance artist, wouldn't all of these exploits have been front and center? I mean, there's different types of performance artists. At some like to be, you know, kind of a scene person that only the people in the know know. And some people like to be more famous and, and big. And I think he's kind of an appointed in the middle. But they're, they're, And to your point, I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive because I think he genuinely wants to know how far he can push this. Because in this article from Vanity Fair, which is an absolute delight to read, I recommend it for absolutely everyone. Oh, the yeah. newest you have to. expose. You have to read this article. Like, it's, yeah. it's that long. That's like, we're going to touch on just the particularly the most ridiculous parts, but this article is long. There's a detailed. rehashing of a lot that has happened yeah. with him in the last like three or so years. So that's not the, the main point of it, but they've gotten new insights exclusive from people who know Ezra in real life or who used to be very close to him. I think COVID broke him, them. I think COVID, I think COVID isolation, lack of work, like, like lack of something like a structured schedule to keep them busy. I think that that broke them in the, in the way that it broke a lot of people on top of being in what I consider to be genuinely a, a pretty bad person. Well, what I surmise from it is firstly that he already struggled struggled with mental health before he kind of flew off the handle in any public way. So that was happening while his career was still afloat. And then he had his parents' divorce in 2019. But then his rep says wasn't the reason for Well, that's what behavior. they say, yeah, but that... can we believe Ezra Miller's <laughs> representative about literally anything? Yeah. I don't. Well, they say he hired specifically hired a firm that specializes in crisis yeah. management. And they're just going to outright lie about yes. anything that makes him look bad. And then when they halted production of, uh, what was the movie? Fantastic Beasts. Fantastic Beasts yep. because of lockdown... He was directionless and decided to just go on countless benders and amass some entourage of devotees. They he hired a, he and hired then a they left man. him. Yeah, he hired a medicine man named Jasper Youngbear to go with him and told him that he was a messiah. And that yeah, this guy just fed his delusions <laughs> even further. I don't know why he would do that. And I, he had to be among the people, which was just code for party on, Wayne. Party on right, he <laughs> and then he came up with this idea. Ezra came up with this idea that he needs different medicine, which is just whatever drug of choice he he chooses for the month. Um, and so his existing mental health issues, plus being directionless for a while, career wise. I really do think that played a lot. Like personal family problems and having no close friendships. Uh, and then drug abuse. This is, and then also unending freedom because he has enough money to run away from his problems everywhere he goes. Yep. This I, is where you end up. I don't really think he's a performance artist. I don't even think he's that aware of. Uh, I, I just feel he's trying to push it because I keep reading these articles and I've I've read so many of them at this point and. There's there's a point in the article. There's where literally so much in here. I can't like it would take us two hours to go yeah. through. But through yeah, all but of th it. there's a point in the article where he's like somewhat getting arrested, and like his response to to the arrest and the search is just hilarious. That was after he assaulted someone in Hawaii uh, in a bar, and so he was like, "I'm non-binary transgender. I don't want to be searched by a man." <laughs> Well, and let's, he let's was the insisting that they, that they were hate criming him, which is a weapon, which is absolutely what that's the the headline that I have for it is basically that he, even his friends say that he does not mind being misgendered, yeah. which is why I'm not bothering right now that he does not mind being misgendered in private because it's a weapon yeah. that he can use to uh, to bludgeon people with. It's it's not really an either or of is he mentally ill or is he a predator uh, and like a menace to society and a bad person. 
it's both. He's mentally ill and he has no morals. So it says some people who know Miller believe that the star weaponizes their gender identity in certain situations. If somebody pisses pisses off Ezra, they're transphobic or a transphobic Nazi, says Ironize Mother, Jumping Eagle, because we're trying to protect our daughter and we're trying to point out that Ezra's done harm to our daughter. Now we're transphobic. A queer associate of Miller states, to me, those are clear instances of manipulation where it's like, are you really queer or is it just a fun way to mark marginalize yourself so that you can be even shittier to others. Miller's rep says that it's completely untrue, saying that the actor stands up for civil rights, gender equality, and encourages conversations in in discourse, so weaponizing identity runs counter to who they are. The actor's preoccupation with guns is another part of it. So he has an altar at his house made of guns, weed, oh, I'm sorry, bullets, weed, sage, and flash figurines. It's Which he also demands that all of the women who enter this house put their phone on that shrine. Yep. Uh, another person remembers Miller burning sage out of the barrel of an AR-15 and waving it around while singing. This is where I actually think he kind of loses the libertarian hero argument. You because think? I, I think part of it is also like they would encourage that you... Uh, Practice safe, responsible gun ownership, not mm-hmm. uh, uh, waving around an AR-15 with burning sage in it. Also, they point out that all of Miller's guns are registered, but in Vermont, you don't. I don't believe that there's a gun registry in Vermont, so I don't think that would even have been necessary. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know how that works. I thought that it was in just a national database, not statewide. No. Uh. Well. But, uh, I don't. Um, I don't believe so. No. So what do you guys think? Is he is he like a Joker character? Where you know, uh, I don't know what I do if I, I actually mean, caught the fire truck, or is he? Because <laughs> I, I feel he's he po- brags about mistreating his dad. That's what I'm saying. Like, what what is he doing? Like, what is this? <laughs> like, it's beyond also, mentally ill. But he's Ill. also claimed, and we have no idea if this is true because. He's also claimed that his ex fiance abused him, but he's claimed that he's gone through abuse since a very young age. Yeah, and he, like, he outward. What says can it. we believe from Ezra anymore that would make sense of this behavior? And now there's a distinction between private and public behavior. So yeah. he's at least cognizant enough to understand. This is what I'm saying. Like, he's cognizant enough to understand that these rules play differently in public versus in private. Yes. And interestingly, people he's associated with know that he's fine with being quote unquote misgendered in private. Yep. Completely okay with it. So yes, he is weaponizing that gender identity. They also compare that his fans to that of Johnny Depp's, which is hilarious. Like those are not comparable situations to me. Not, not at all. I mean, I think that's just from the perspective that Johnny Depp has a very dedicated fan base and they're comparing the fan base by saying that like some of his some of Ezra Miller's devotees at this point because there are so few left are extremely dedicated yeah. and will go to extremes like doxing to avenge him also and they they point out that the family the the wife the the woman with her kids came from a pot like that that he brought to his house in this Vermont. was this was new information was yes. it not yeah it was that they basically they said that the, when he had a woman and her three children at their house in Vermont and the police were done were called to do a a check there we were under the impression that the husband had called and it was just a husband it was actually a polyamorous family so he the father of these three children at the farm in Vermont who are no longer there. We have no idea where they are. They're the children of the patriarch of a polyamorous uh, polycule in Hawaii. His, his term, polycule. The mixture of polyamory and, and molecule, right? That's what he called it? Well, that's not Ezra Miller's term, though. Okay. He didn't make that up. That's like a thing. Okay. Sadly. Um, and now this, this father of these children still has seemingly uh, a positive view of Ezra Miller, yes. even after this incident has happened and his children have been taking fr- taken from him. And I suppose this is his one of his four wives. Yes. Which is, I didn't know that was legal, but I mean, so if you're... Mar- you'd only be able to marry one... Legally, right. and the rest would be a religious, some type of religious ceremony. Yeah, it's unclear what that meant to them. So, also, there was two incidences in Iceland, not one. Uh, one was not caught yeah. on camera. So, 
Ezra Miller choked two people when he was in Reykjavik. I'm sorry for laughing, but the only that, difference, I'm not actually laughing. The only difference being that one of those incidents was not filmed. One of the most striking things about this entire article was there's a point where somebody asked about altercations with Ezra Miller, and they said every conversation with Ezra Miller is an altercation. Right. Every, every time you interact or every interaction with Ezra Miller is an altercation. Or even if it's not, it's going to be twisted by him later on yes. to say that it was. So it says, while in Iceland, Miller was accompanied by Jasper, Jasper Youngbear, a 55-year-old North Dakota medicine man that the actor had hired as a spiritual advisor. Youngbear seemed to have stoked Ezra's outsized vision of himself. Jasper was telling Ezra that he wasn't part of the movement, he was the movement, and that he was the next messiah, and the Freemasons were sending demons to kill him says a source who like others have been close to Miller sometimes misgenders the actor who said not who is said not to insist on they them pronouns in private young bear did not respond to request for comment uh, it says I'm here to do what I can for everybody oh wait let me I'm gonna go back to this part here where it says uh, uh, this is like from an interview with GQ uh, the same month after as the Iceland chokings Miller seemed to suggest a higher purpose telling the writer my prerogative is uh, is service. I'm here to do what I can for everybody I can do it for. The rest of the interview, per the writer, was less conversation than it was a string of sermons. I'm not sure exactly what everything means, he wrote, but it sounds cool, so I nod my head along. It's and that's really what has caused yes, this string of abuse, is people just nodding along, smiling and waving, because if they're either afraid of him or they think that he has some right to be crazy because he's a creative. And, and well, partially that, but also partially because, because of his identity, they know that any pushback is liable to get them labeled and in trouble because they're pushing back on somebody who's from a protected and it class. Has. Someone else, uh, I think another anonymous source, said that anyone who crosses Ezra Miller he accuses of being a transphobe or a transphobic Nazi. That's why I don't believe this. That's precisely why I don't believe this. Because the people that believe that they are a non-traditional sexual identity, or I don't know if that's even the right term, but let's go with it. They believe it in public and private everywhere. Like, they believe in an outer space. And so if this guy in private, with the people that he's the closest to, he doesn't mind. Yep. I I, I, I understand that one thing would be intention. He may, he maybe he understands that the people closest to him, like their intention is not to offend him. However, you would think that after a while that he'd be really insistent on, hey man, you know me for a while, call me they. Yep. You know, but it's not that. It's a tool he uses and he weaponizes for his ill behavior. Yes. And gotta say this isn't the, f the first and the only case of people doing that yep and, and i think it's a i don't know if genre is the word but it's like a genre of people or an archetype of people that they see the way the world is yep and they're doing it because they can get away with it and i think this guy maybe because of mental health maybe because what you said like covid broke him like you know covid broke mary mm -hmm. mary thinks Waffle House is better than IHOP, you know. <laughs> okay. That is that is. Go quite, ahead. Actually, start some. Actually, beef. I'm 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 gonna go ahead and say I'm Team Mary on this one. COVID Waffle broke, House better than IHOP. Yeah, it's COVID candy. broke bread. Bread thinks Waffle House is better than IHOP. It's you know like there's people <laughs> with genuine mental health <laughs> issues. That's one of them. And that's one of them. So it's well, a, your your point earlier also was that. When Ezra Miller is being blamed for something, Suddenly. Ezra Miller is a man. Right. And no. when he's doing something that's approved, oh, yeah, yeah. he's non-binary. He's queer. Yeah. Let, let, sorry. Let's um, be more uh, specific about that. In articles referenced about they or the him, whatever, when he's when he's doing a no-no, he's a he's a man. Yeah. The, the man's doing the no-no. Man, the man's wrong. <laughs> However, when he's being brave and bold, it's a they. Yep. So, I mean, so it says, in 2018, Miller came out as non-binary and polyamorous, telling Playboy about the free love mo environment they've created for themselves, calling it Polycule, a portmanteau of uh, polyamorous and molecule. According to three people in Miller's circle, the Polycule is less, than a, dem less a democratic society than an ever-shifting court harem of mostly young women. A friend of the actor says, an openly polyamorous lifestyle that's not inherently wrong to me, but Miller's situation, in their opinion, is actually a patriarchal dictatorship 
dictatorship where Ezra controls all the sex as the man and plays the women against each other, screams at them, belittles them in front of others. The young women in the actor's orbit often included a Londoner named Rosie, who told uh, Vanity Fair that she is Miller's partner. In Dakota Iron Eyes, multiple people described the actor stranding Rosie and Iron Eyes without transportation or money and humiliating them. An old friend partly blames Yes Men, who watched it all happen. Even though I've learned Ezra's such an a-hole, I don't think it exonerates the people that were happy to eat off Ezra's plate until it didn't suit them anymore. I think they ended up probably accidentally being complicit in weird abuses uh, of power and celebrity it's not even accidental no. because there were these people crashing at his properties who knew exactly what was going on but because they wanted to mooch off of his wealth and how clueless he is of his own surroundings they ignored what was happening. The house in Vermont contains an altar uh, that that's home to bullets, weed, sage, and flash figurines. According to two people who visited the, that, that year, a lot of times he makes the women put their cell phones on the altar when they come in, and others, and so they're offering. So it's, it's right up there in the cult handbook of turning everything linguistically uh, on its head. Uh, and then this is my, the part that I, what really made me want to cover it, which is he freaked out recently demanding that Susan Sarandon come pay tribute to his altar because she didn't v invite Ezra to a dinner party. Finally. Uh, yes. Uh, she, uh, uh, yeah. So I, I just... <laughs> I think uh, we should address, like, because of the flash figurines detail, how his mental break seems to uh, reveal an identity crisis related to the characters that he has played yep. in movies. So, like, two friends anonymously reported that when they visited him at his farm, they came in the house and he was laying face down on the ground with a crossbow aimed at the door, sitting on a table. Which is like from a, a movie that Which, he was in. Yeah, his breakout role in We Need to Talk About Kevin, he played a uh, school shooter who used a crossbow to kill his classmates. Mm -hmm. And that was the exact prop that was used in the movie. He kept it. Yep. And then he also in his arrest video wa was... Um, he had the he ring. Was, he, was, he had his ring. He had, had his flash he ring. He had his ring confiscated from his pocket, his flash ring, and he was saying it's very important to him. Like he's just in a in a way, it seems he is clinging to these roles he's played more than his real identity. And and they talk a lot about the abuse that he uh, he suffered at the hands of Hollywood from a young age, and then they get into and that's a totally valid thing. So they're all cut. it's like his characters he's played, who uh, how Hollywood raised him in an abusive setting, and then it says when Miller was in Hawaii, sources say the actor the actor's divorced parents flew to the the uh, flew to the island to try and help. Miller showed friends an intensely awkward video they'd made of a tearful family reunion. They laughed as they queued it up. He was like. Isn't this the most effed up stuff uh, you've ever seen? Says someone who was there. Uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing to uh, cut out the swearing there. The source says that Miller had bragged about punishing their father in the wake of the divorce. He was like, nobody's ever been treated as badly as I've treated Bob Miller in the past year. He was like, I think it's going to make us ultimately much closer in the future. That is very, very dangerous thinking. That means that it's there's there's forethought and malice and the idea that bad behavior can lead to two people being closer. Do you think he was being sarcastic, though? I don't think so. No. Uh, I, I, or in his delusion, he genuinely thinks that... I think he believes it. The discord he's, he's causing in his family is for their better. Yep. The source says the situation is similar to that. What many people have, who have spent time with the actor have experienced... The way I describe it was it's like a non-consensual emotional BDSM relationship <laughs> with Ezra. Wow. Another source in Hawaii asked whether he ever witnessed an altercation involving Ezra. Uh, cuts to, and they cuts to the chase even quicker. Every interaction with Ezra is an altercation. So a lot of the comments from these anonymous associates or former associates and friends. Which is something to They're worded point in out. a certain way that you can tell it's you know, coming from the same camp that a lot of them identify as queer themselves or non-binary themselves and are also, uh, you know, politically woke, whatever you want to call it. Yep. But that doesn't 
excuse Ezra of his actions the way that he wants it to. Like, but that's also the reason that he has acquired these yes men. Yep. Well, and, and that, I mean, I think Yes Men is the number one thing that uh, in Hollywood, everyone that reaches a certain level of fame and money is going to have those people that orbit them and can't say no. Or maybe they think that humoring him in his delusions is the response that he needs when he's at such a fragile mental state. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's like, uh, and some people just aren't confrontational and aren't going to want to rock the boat, not even necessarily for personal gain, but just because they're not in, uh, they're not inherently like, uh, a, happy about the idea of confronting someone especially when that someone can tear you down with an accusation in a in a heartbeat and has all of the identity markers to protect them from pushback yeah i i also wanted to bring up that he claims to be in therapy right now he claims to be lie undergoing right through, treatment he will lie for right through his mental health crisis mm -hmm. but uh one of these anonymous sources said he's probably playing a character and acting in treatment <laughs> they said Jeez. when he went to do the movie about dolly that went about the dalai lama right and, and they said that uh, he was on set for a couple of days and nobody would have he been able totally to tell professional he was totally, he was and calm totally like people if if he is in fact if it is malicious and he's abusive he has learned to hide it very 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 well and you'll never see it unless he want unless he knows that you're susceptible to the behavior that's needed to abuse someone so uh the average person and i and i'll point out this um in a less confrontational context i was able when i was before i got sober i could uh i could get my way through any type of like there was a couple of times where I had instances where I ended up having to go and have psych evals done because of instances with drug use. Right. And you can talk your way right through that. I went to therapy uh, before I actually wanted to get help. You can talk your way through that very easily if you need to. Right. It's very mm -hmm. easy to do that. And, until and imagine you actually you've hired someone yeah. as well to represent you and talk you yeah. out of situations on your behalf until you actually want to get help it won't mean anything so i don't think him having to go to therapy because a 200 million dollar movie relies on it is not a recipe for something actually getting solved and people actually healing themselves and getting better it's yeah really there's no real way. remorse nope. because it was his role as the flash being threatened that prompted him to publicly switch course and it's honestly a, a testament to the state of the mental health industry right now where how, how could they not know or is it how could they not know or how could they not care as, yeah. long, as long as it's, the checks can come in right so this is uh he, he they also spoke to ezra's former fiance Aaron. yeah uh, and so they asked uh, she wanted to be identified by only by her first name i don't know uh it wasn't somebody that i had heard of before um, and then they say right here, it says, the Ezra that I knew wasn't violent or physically abusive towards anyone, she said. To think back is painful because we had a deep love and he was good to me, but she does remember darkness after the breakup. For years, he convinced me and all our friends that I was abusive, but looking back, I would be calling out his disrespect and he wouldn't take responsibility and just call me abusive because of my reaction. I could have handled it. I couldn't, I could have handled it better. I didn't know the term gaslight at that uh, back then. I was emotionally effed up for years. She said that Miller broke up with her after hiring a spiritual advisor who told her, who told the actor that she was a parasite. I don't know if that's the same spiritual advisor, the the Jasper, uh, or if he's hired multiple. We have no idea because the timing doesn't seem to work out for that. Yeah, uh, I, I felt like Jasper was hired after Fantastic Beasts was farther down the line. But I want to point out that this is the behavior of a cry bully. And that is a real thing, which is they push you, they push you, they push you, you finally break, and then it's your fault for breaking. What was the term you you told me today? Remember? Um, I'm sure it was genius, though, since I said it. <laughs> oh, you, you read it online and it had a, a definition. Oh, uh, toxic sensitivity. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where you, uh, basically the idea that you foster and you allow people to live in their delusion without calling it out, which ends up being bad for everyone involved because we have started to tear down the institutions that have built our society to allow people to live within the the confines of their delusion in the real world. And That's ultimately it's cruelty because essentially what you're saying is that I am so risk averse yep. and I care about you so little that 
because of this minor inconvenience, I'm not going to pull you out of your delusion. Well, it's a, that's a lot to ask of a single person, to, uh, especially in, a, in the world we live in now. One person can rarely do that for another person. It takes uh, so a lot of times uh, in, in addiction. It's not one person that makes you see that. It's a lot of people have to come together to help you realize that, you're, uh, that the decisions you're making are bad. I, I get that side of it, but there are also people earning their entire income yes. off of fueling his delusions mm -hmm. these spiritual advisors these pr reps the spiritual advisors warner brothers the, the pr reps that <laughs> one it's like that's their job the 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 spiritual advisor one feels more con artist to me it does right it, like you are literally getting hired and paid yep. to feed someone's actual schizophrenic delusions so uh, those are the real menaces. I yes, feel. The, I, the, they're not helping. things. It, it's sad also because I think that Ezra Miller is talented and he has potential, but he's squandering it um, and he doesn't have anyone close to him who actually cares or if they do care, they're completely rendered unable to help him. And like the writer of of perks of being a wallflower said that uh the kid that he met i think ezra miller was like 20 something mm -hmm. at this time he was he said he was a remarkably magical person and i always like to believe that the person is always in there i hope that they can find the help they need um that's sad like i don't think of him as e irredeemable but he needs to actually want help i mean in this all of this and i want to point out that all of this actually is framed brilliantly around the fact that the allegations that are against him as far as the grooming of children are far 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 more serious than we actually because we can't we can't substantiate it and we can't prove that to be true it's hard no. to talk about it without kind of just saying but what do we know yeah well his pr rep said all of these uh, perfect excuses for it, right? Yeah. Yep. For the 12 year old non binary child who we have talked well, about on the show before. didn't get any of Ezra's attention anymore, and they were very sad. This was a, f yeah, this was twisted around said. that it was a fan who was clearly disappointed that they didn't get the attention they wanted from Ezra, and. Ezra was just not interested in being friends. When the story we got from that 12-year-old's mother, mother not the child. was that he was taking a clear interest in the child and was trying to uh, tell, tell the kid that you have a future in fashion and art mm. and I can help you. And They talk about that in here, like, you're going to run my record label. You're he gonna does do this, this to like, every... Like, yeah. a lot of people that he meets who are at a low point in life or who are especially vulnerable that. or impressionable. I have that here. So it says, Miller would extend quixotic offers to people the actor met during their travels. Says the source, he was telling these kids, you're going to be in my band, I'm going to produce your album, and, you're can, and you can run my music studio. Whether they were visual artists, DJs, kids that were in college, or sometimes kids who might have been homeless, he would recruit them in a period of vulnerability and promise them all of these things. Nothing ever seemed to materialize. Like very clearly, like with no effort made beyond just that initial pitch for whatever physical or emotional reward he got from seeing these people uh, excited uh, about something he said to them. Yeah, and that's really the self worship aspect of yes. it. He's he's looking for people who just have a religious devotion to him uh, and are willing to hold on to him no matter what. Like. I think Tokata was exactly that because he told people that they were together because she was running away from an abusive household where her parents didn't accept her sexual identity, yep. we're, we're, which is a complete lie. Miller is said to have woven young Takoda, uh, Takoda, is it Takoda or Takoda? I say Takoda. Takoda, yeah. Takoda iron eyes into the narrative claiming that the pair was fated to be together. A rep for Miller maintains that the actor's relationship with the activist has always been platonic. Can you imagine being that, like, can you imagine, like, somebody needs to make a movie about being that publicist who has to come up with a response to all of this. Even uh, if that is a platonic friendship, you can't recover that PR-wise. Nope, it says, That's uh, not a normal friendship to have. And 
they were like basically drifters, mm -hmm. homeless drifters in Hawaii, st like sometimes even sleeping in a tent. Ezra is in Je the mountains. Yep. Ezra is Jesus in Takotas, in Takota an apocalyptic Native American spider goddess, and their union is supposed to bring about the apocalypse. Recaps one person, and that the real reason everyone is so opposed to them being together. Uh, Iron Eyes Mother Jumping Eagle had heard the story too. They are some kind. They are. Uh, it says they say they are some kind of Messiah, and they're going to lead an indigenous revolution. The actor themselves does not have Native American ancestry, and despite being fixated on Native cultures, does not strike everyone as respectful. He professes that he walks through this world with an indigenous humility and spiritual awareness, says one Indigenous insider. But point of fact, he doesn't at all because he doesn't care. It's classic, like white. R rich white, white liberal saviorism? white saviorism except uh, he literally thinks that on a cosmic yeah. level he is a savior for the entire world this is the most this is the most dangerous type of person we could have in society right now who is uh malicious vindictive guarded by many layers of not just fame not just money also personal in identity that protects him on every level uh the society of hollywood that protects him on every level this is the this is how bad things come to pass there are so many things working in their favor well, something else that's working in his favor, ironically, is that he's not famous enough for for the media to latch onto this. Well, or just regular, like, or like if this he's was... not actually that relevant. Yeah. In Hollywood. Yeah. Mainly because he's been out of work and he hasn't, he has no like ability to turn off his dysfunction for long enough yep. to be professional. Um, but he's just lacking enough relevancy to the point where these scandals haven't uh, gotten enough attention in the media. Yep. Well, also, I think a lot of people are, are scared to push back because of uh, that Miller contain, like has a very, very fashionable identity that's hard to push back on now. I, I do believe that plays part of it. But do you think this scandal could... Um, that story... Maybe for, in a general sense, make that excuse less viable for other people at least perhaps uh i i don't know i, I think in that if it was situations. a straight i think if it was a straight white dude who were in a polyamorous uh cult with an altar at his room i, I don't think he would be given that amount of leeway we've seen them canceled for a lot less yeah, in, in this they're like but he's just he's an artist he was a he's a queer icon he's this he's that no he's just kind of a bad person who's using he's identity hoster. he's to uh yeah. to take advantage of people we've seen less relevant celebrities canceled mm -hmm. for a lot less oh, yes. like think about uh, the front man of Arcade Fire yeah. when we were talking about that situation. That was just bad dates from what I remember, right? Like, yeah. oh, no, there, no, 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 no. There was one, I there think. There was one that Never mind, alleged yeah. abuse. Okay. But but the rest of it was basically boiled down to, like, he he was, like, not, uh, uh, he, he wanted to, like, use me for, like, video chat sex, basically. Yeah. Uh, it's it, just bizarre, the, um, like, just the incongruent response when one straight white guy will publicly claim to be transgender and privately not care at all about being misgendered. And I think then the other, uh, the other straight white guy doesn't have that identity and mm -hmm. he has no leeway whatsoever. He's just an evil genius who figured out he'd be able to use it to his benefit years earlier. Right. He was ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. Way ahead um, of the curve. In that way. And I remember when he was widely liked and he was on his come up. Yep. And then it just seemed like he kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. To start a cult in, yeah. the, in Vermont with alpacas and llamas. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'd love guns. to know where that 25-year-old mother and her three kids are the, now. Yeah. I, I, he kicks them out? I don't know. To it avoid law like, enforcement? It seems like it's very easy for Ezra Miller to just kick people to the curb when they no longer suit him. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I want to see... I want to find the Instagram live that Anna, yeah. the, that mother did defending him yep. because she hasn't publicly come out against him at all. Yep. So let's go to Super Chats, Do though. It. We can only <laughs> dwell on it for, for so, so long. long. IFID said, has anyone considered that these are the actions of reverse <sighs> Ezra Miller? Also, Anthony Starr for reverse Flash in the DCEU. Headphones? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Um. What's up? Uh, I'm turning the game. We have a little 
audio yeah. issue. Good now? Okay. Good now? Okay. Anthony Starr for reverse flash would be interesting. Uh, when when Anthony Starr was on Banshee, I would have said no because he had a beard and he was gruff and really like... Uh, what would reverse flash mean? Rever- reverse flash is a character. Re- that's a, but what's that's actual, reverse Ezra Miller? Uh, reverse... <laughs> uh, well, no. They're saying that uh, if... A functioning uh, citizen. Reverse flash... Ezra Miller is reverse flash because reverse flash is evil in the comics. Then reverse Ezra Miller is... He's reverse Ezra Miller. I don't know. Maybe... Right, maybe so there's a real... Well, There's a good Ezra Miller out there. Perhaps, somewhere. Yeah, perhaps <laughs> That's somewhere. what that means. Also, Anthony Starr, like I said, uh, until I saw him in The Boys, uh, maybe I could see that once he's clean cut and clean shaven. He kind of looks like the guy. He's kind of got the same hair as the guy who played the reverse Flash uh, in in the Flash TV series. Not the Tom Cavanaugh version that was Harrison Wells, but the other one uh, that what was if, Eobard Thawne. What if this is all just an elaborate stunt? To one day do the reverse Flash movie. Oh my god! And it's the, Ezra Miller. Oh my god! Completely reinvented. I would do it. I think I'd fall for it. I think I'd be like, "Let's go!" <laughs> uh, as what? far as we know, right now, by the way, um, Ezra is reshooting some scenes for the Flash. Think his age is gonna show from and all the drinking and drugs? Yeah, I don't know. Like, he's abused his body a lot so maybe it'll show i mean the makeup which I th- scenes are being reshot i think the the makeup if especially if he's wearing the mask if there's scenes that involve the costume there'd be less visible it's just been so long since yep. they started filming it yep so, i just don't know how some people can get fired for silly tweets and this guy and this happens assaults people. yeah it is weird right how in how uh in Congress, the like you, you really can't. There is no rhyme or reason to well, any of it. Ever. Also, other people don't have two hundred million dollars invested into them. That is true. That is true. Th- mm. That's got to be part. See, of it. see, just me and Ezra. Okay, like now here, here's <laughs> another way to push back on people who's saying that David Zaslav doesn't like, uh, isn't progressive. He's like. <laughs> I'm kidding here, right. but like he's like, well, you know, uh, I'm so progressive that just let Ezra Miller, you know, abuse half the world, just so we get our Flash <sighs> movie made. Yes, yeah. King. Johnny Derp said, Avast ye lubbers. It be talk like a pirate day and this old sea dog's birthday. An extra share of grog for all hands. Keel hall scalawags who refuse. That was amazing that you got through that without, I, I wouldn't have been able to get through that. <laughs> Avast uh, ye lubbers. Wow. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Clint Torres said, Howdy people. Mary, I do so love your attempts at a Texan accent, but I feel only Dane has the bravado to read this next line. Dane? I'm trying to scroll up to see it, but uh, the chat oh, doesn't it went let me too scroll fast? up. All right. He just said, let's get this party started. Four over times. And, over. and then on the fifth one, you say right at the end. Uh, I'm flattered that you think I had the bravado, so I'm going to Have I it. even tried a Texan accent before? I, I don't remember. Australian. Yeah, week. that was Australian. Do I gotta say in a Texan accent? Well, or, or do you say, um, uh, read me my rights? <laughs> yeah, Put read me, me my rights. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know that Mary will sometimes sing that song uh, this is off our air, inside, and, joke, and it okay. makes me it makes me giggle every <laughs> single time. It does. Nathan Settlemeyer said, "Week two blonde Brett over week one blonde Brett." Week two blonde. I, I don't know if it actually. They're looks warming any up to it more. I don't know. I don't know if it's any actually blonder. I've been using the purple shampoo. If anything, shampoo. it would get a little less bright blonde over time. <laughs> what if you become like the new wholesome Ezra? Because I don't want to be any type of Ezra. <laughs> just there's a be- band named Better Than Ezra. I don't even want to be them. Hear me out. You know, it's gonna be good. No, no. It, it's um, it can't be that hard to be the good version of Ezra. It's <laughs> <laughs> so basically it's like you didn't attack anyone. You didn't emotionally you manipulate. From I mean, you haven't yeah. spitting in anyone's face. Yeah, well, throwing that you a have. chair at anyone. And and I have not thrown any chair. But you guys haven't seen what Brett is like off camera. Okay. What he throws chairs at me. I do. I just, I just sometimes <laughs> I just pick this chair up and I just lob it over the camera. But we right? pay him good money for that, so yeah. it's fine. Mary, but it's okay. Mary's Mary, she likes it. She likes it when I throw the chair at her. <laughs> it keeps it things interesting. It does. It does. She's just really good at ducking it. <laughs> Alan Smith said. That Ezra shrine is exactly what any generic American cult shrine would look like. Yeah, it's not even all that. Like, I wish just somebody had a picture of it. Hmm. 
That's for the next expose. Yes, exactly. I was sort of like, <laughs> I would like to know, like, does this bother you? Like, so many of its unnamed source, this, un- like, somebody could, they could have just hired, like, the world's most creative writer to yeah. come up and make all that stuff up. But that would be illegal. Does anyone trust Can anything That anyway? would be defamatory. Does anyone trust anything anyway, anymore? No, like, they don't. Not, nothing. Only pop culture crisis. Well, yes. If, if you're looking for nothing but pure objective fact and truth, you come to Pop Culture Crisis Frankly. For, for all of your pop culture needs and news. What I think is all of these anonymous sources or the sources um, or his associates who have refrained from commenting have been paid off under the table. They called it a whack-a-mole game of paying off alleged yeah. victims. Yeah, that's either in any official capacity or just Ezra offering cash to somebody to be quiet. Yep. It's very effective. And that's how he's avoided. That's at least part of how he's avoided accountability for so long. Yep. Tacti Platy said, I volunteered to be Brett's yes man. Oh, there we go. Well, thank you. <laughs> do you need any? <laughs> um, do I need a yes? Some, yeah, maybe sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Potatoes for Seamus said, welcome to the first <laughs> church of PCC where we worship Brett's blondness and where we will own nothing and like it. Exactly. LOL. You will eat the bugs. You will live in the hut and you will worship my blondness. You will live on the pod. Exactly. That's exactly right. All right, guys, we are going to move on to Dane's favorite topic of the day. Dane, do you want to tell us all about the tone deaf tweet that Frost uh, that Frost left? Uh, it was on Thursday or Friday after there was a bunch of layoffs at G4 TV. I kind of want to give a history lesson. First. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, please. that happens. Sorry. I think you overcorrected it. But can you mm-hmm. put it up a little? Okay. So, guys, this used to be a country. Okay. And this country... We had G4 TV, where it was about video games, bros, and hot people. 2002. It was a what beautiful a year. Word. Mary, you wouldn't I understand. remember it like it was yesterday you were, you, because you, I'm two years old. You were, you, were like, <laughs> you, were, you, were, you, were, you were but a gleam in your parents' eye just, years before, just a couple of years before. Mm-hmm. But this was a thing. Uh, the we world, were a country. We were a proper country. Uh, so yes, we, we all we could all kind of coalesce around the idea of hot women video games who pretend to like video games. Yeah, for some your of them v- viewing pleasure. Some some generally <laughs> pretended, and they pretended well. Yes, and, and some, good on them for that. Good on them, and some hot chicks generally like video games. Whoa, <laughs> I mean That's maybe crazy. I mean I've never seen it, <laughs> <laughs> but G Four TV was the channel it, it was almost the internet 2.0 before there was internet 2.0 it had memes it had game reviews it had generally interesting commentary on games in the gaming industry it covered e3 about it had cops for some reason also Dasha. think about this it died the year that gamergate happened 2012 or 2014 2014 interesting yeah, yeah. it all comes back At such a perfect moment to duck out of that scene it's gonna be it hilarious just about to turn into an absolute <laughs> hurricane when this country just collapses and, and and then in the history books by whoever succeeds succeeds us it ends up being like it all started with gamergate kids if you're a G- <laughs> and they <laughs> worshiped this man named ezra miller <laughs> <laughs> if you're a G- for historian is like they, they have the show where they would compete in video games they have x play x plays budget keeps going up attack of the show kevin Pereira and olivia munn the the good the freaking good old days guys and then olivia munn leaves and why did she leave to become like an to, actual actress beca- she she was when, on a daily when did that show happen? with john stewart when did she leave I don't remember exactly, but it must have been something like 2007, 2008, 2009, around that so time. So that was like the start of the end for them? It really was. I also want okay. to point out that nobody has ever seen Frosk and Machine Gun Kelly in the same room. They haven't. I'm just saying. <laughs> and then they try to Do re- with that what you will. Yes. So Kevin Pereira left, and that the channel at that point is a husk of its former self, because say what you mind, that he really was the, the star of that show. And then he, he, on his own right, he tries to revive the brand once again, under the attack instead of the attack of the show just the attack when was that that was when i was in college so it must have been like 20 
2016, 2017. Oh, wow. Okay. And it freaking failed because it was his understudy who was honestly not as charismatic and as interesting as he is. He was kind of a bro that was kind of intense and rude. Okay. And there, there was, they had the, they had this dynamic with this other girl called Erin Stevie, and she was a delight. But they had no chemistry whatsoever, mm. and so that went down. And the big thing about G Four is there was a huge beef between Olivia Munn and Kevin Pereira. I'm just gonna say it the Latin way. Bite me. Okay. That there was a huge beef between the two that seemed to be ir- irreconcilable for a while. Do we know what the beef was? <sighs> what was it about? They, they poke fun of it. Creative in, differences. Love that one. I, <laughs> That's a classic. Honest, classic. Honestly, I think the common theory is that it's jealousy because she became a star to the point where mm. she was an X-Men in a bunch of things. And yeah. they had a falling out because they were partners in crime. And they were generally good friends from wh- what I could hear. And so G4... It tries to revive the brand for the third time. I want to point out you can't do it. You can't. You. I don't think these things are revivable. I think this yeah. is what nostalgia is getting wrong. That something like this. You, you led this whole conversation with this was a like we were a country. You can't recapture the magic of that place in time as much as you want to. But everyone's and, trying to. And I feel like one huge part of that also is that. They started on cable television, right. and then so Olivia Munn millions. leaves 2007 or 8, right? That's just when YouTube is on the rise. Mm-hmm. And then they leave right before Gamergate pops off, and they come back into an entirely different atmosphere, an entirely different uh, industry, really, that's changed on a fundamental level, and they want to bring back the same exact programs with the same names and the same pitch they haven't updated at all and it's not just the woke aspect of it that was the real problem they they could have done something non-woke but still come into an oversaturated market with an unoriginal idea they needed new shows and Different hiring decisions, and obviously. And not have Frost come in and tell everyone that they're no, sexist for yeah, not wanting. Yeah, no so, wokeness. That's I'm, an obvious thing. But there are other failures, too. Right. And I'll get there. So, okay. So, let let me fast forward it. So, Olivia Mon, Kevin Pereira, completely irre- irreconcilable until they have, like, a Thanksgiving or Christmas special where it's just a bunch of member berries where, like, hey, guys, remember this, remember that? Uh, aren't, weren't we great? And they use it as a platform to launch G4 once again. But this time completely under the actual brand of G4 TV. They're not playing around with it. They're like, it's supposedly the relaunch of the brand on YouTube. It's going to be great. But, and, and here's the first trinkles of it. Here's the first trinkles of, hey, this is, you're not going to get what you wanted. Like, this is the last bit of member base you're going to get. They bring this guy from wrestling, right? Austin Creed or something, right? Uh-huh. Austin Watson? No, no, Austin Creed. No, what's his name? No, I don't remember. Well, he's I thought a- it was Watson, and then his stage name is like Xavier. Xavier, Xavier Woods. Woods. Xavier Sorry. Woods. Sorry, from from the New Day. Yep. Yeah, so Xavier Woods, they bring him in, and he does this whole thing in in the special where he's like. Yeah, G4 was good, but you guys forgot about people of color. And they were like, oh, sorry, that was a no-no. And you know what? It is what it is, right? It, it, it probably was a no-no. They, they could have been more diverse. But they got the people. They had it at a time. It was magic. It, it, was, it was good. It was what it was. And basically, their whole thing goes out to be, we're going to be a, a modern version of G4. We're, we're still in LA, you know, so we're going to be all diverse and woke. But it's going to be video games. It's going to be fun. It's going to be skits. The whole hootenanny. Uh, that's going to be my new word. Hootenanny. Hootenanny. And then it happens. You know, because in fairness, the, the, the brand is going on YouTube and it's getting subscribers. I'm sure they paid for it. But it's getting subscribers and, and they're really... It started to kick off. And then trolls on the internet being being what they are... They comment that one of the hosts that they got, I think she's a League of Legends commentator, if I'm not mistaken. Her name is Frosk. Or her Indiana game, Black. Her tag is Frosk. Indiana Frosk-er-in Black. Froskerin or whatever. Froskerin, right. But she usually she goes by Frosk. 
essentially she goes on a huge long diatribe where she says, listen, I'm not here to be hot. I'm here to give my professional opinion and something, something feminism, something, something. We're not here to be ogled at. And Adam Sessler is just like, clap, clap, like a seal. Hard, hard, so hard. much yep. because who was even commenting anything that would suggest that's what she was there for. Per usual, probably three guys in chat. Like, yep. no one expected Frost to be there to be hot. She was never traditionally and conventionally the, attractive. And then you hit and you see the list, uh, their subscriber count drop from nine, 496 down to 492, which is where they've stayed since then, it, it seems like. So, uh, it, wait, how many do they have? Uh, 490 Cause for the X-Play. I X thought that they... X oh, okay, not, okay. X-Play not G4 TV. Yeah, the main um, channel has like a 132K. Yes. Uh, so, so it drops uh, over a period of days because they don't know how to shut up. And uh, I want to come back mm -hmm. to this concept. I think back to the, uh, the phrase, um, the world you were born into no longer exists. And I hear that phrase a lot. And it hits me very, very hard because yeah. uh, a lot of the stuff that I watch, the stuff that I enjoy, was created prior to 2016. And I think this proves that, you know, uh, whenever people talk about reviving a TV show, I tell them it's a bad idea. You cannot recapture that magic. It doesn't work that way. Even if you create the same thing again it has to be different in some way, right? So if you create the same thing again, there's the question of why was this? Need, why did you need to continue this if there was no new story to tell? Mm -hmm. But with something like this, it evokes the sense memory of a certain time, a certain place, a certain state in which we as a society coalesced around a certain amount of social ideas. At that time, it was hot women and video games, and that was a thing that was a great part of our culture at that time. And, like, MTV was still yes. a big thing back then. So like, the whole uh, playing field was different. It's just not... Like, now, if people wanted to do this, they'd just go to Twitch and find any number of independent creators that are creating the same type of content on their own. Yeah. But the thing is... That vacuum was filled. Yes, very quickly. I mean, it has and it hasn't. Because the, the, the good thing about G4 was it was generally well-produced content. It was skits. They were funny. And they had thoughtful, provoking interviews with game developers. They had very in-depth gaming reviews. And they, uh, to their credit, they still have it. But before they give you the review, they have to do this mea culpa. Like, sorry for being white, everyone. I'm sorry that I'm offending you on screen by being white presenting yada yada anyway here's a review and so anyway Fr frost does her spiel everyone gets annoyed because it, it really wasn't what she was saying it was how she said it mm -hmm. and how accusatory no i think it's also what she was saying i mean sure but like i'm, pr I'm pretty sure you could say it in a way where it's not as it comes with annoying an air of of Contempt. It's the it's audience. the era of contempt. Is Adam Sessler never and the company never recovers, never. And it's Adam Sessler like clapping like, oh my god. So freaking the, uh, now, like a lot of people think karma wise, like it serves them right. They changed leadership back in uh, March, right? Uh, their former president stepped down, was replaced with another one who was all focused on slashing costs, mm -hmm. and now. 20 to 30 people have been fired people who by the way are not on camera who are not public facing and who then never, it's never the people on camera they halt programming for a single day and come back the next day acting like everything's fine and you know continuing with all of their normal shows so it's just like you can't really regain momentum after that no you can't and the thing is so it is they, they basically never mention it but it's understood that er, all of this is a, a result of her real rude clapback right and then frost makes a smart ass comment about her not being one of the people who were fired it's like if you have any camaraderie with those staff members who got laid off you would not make a comment like that exactly. right because either the uh, you obviously didn't do it in a what's this what's the word like you obviously didn't do it in purpose right like I, i'm sure she if, if she, had she known or maybe 
I don't know. I don't want to assume. But had she known that her diatribe would have gotten the company that far off track, maybe she wouldn't have done it. But it's ple- it's data provable that she went. She goes on a rant. All the usual drama channels are like, can you believe they did this? Mm-hmm. And their views literally jump half off the next day. Mm-hmm. So what happened here, genius? And she has to be self-aware enough to know this is kind of my fault. I may the, the company is not on the up and up anymore. It's on the down. Well, it shows that they're really not focused on money as much as they're focused on their ideology. Like these are true ideologues who are not profit driven. They're they're driven by messaging. But it's not even they're inconsistent with the messaging because then there's like hot chicks on the show. And she's like, mm, wouldn't I love to have a snack of that? So that part is always very annoying. That, okay, they do the same thing in comics, right? Where, uh, or even in the movies. Think, think about this. You cannot write articles about women being attractive, but they can make all the articles they want about Henry Cavill's abs and about uh, how good uh, various superheroes, uh, how the guys get in great shape for these movies. But the second you do it about women, they're, you're not allowed to do that because that's sexist. And in the comics, what happens is when a, when a, when a guy writes a comic right uh that shows a woman is conventionally attractive that's not okay but when a girl does it uh for like a a, a, like a like a relationship that's lgbtqia that's fine so it's a weird type of double standard where you're not allowed to show both yeah objectification is only it's okay when you do it uh, yeah approved if a woman is doing it which is like very short-sighted because Mm -hmm. it'll bring about the same consequences and your idea of of reversing that power dynamic then is to allow women to have the same toxic, so-called toxic behaviors that they've accused men of having. They're allowed to now, for now. And so like, that's your idea of reversing a power imbalance is just having women display the same dehumanizing behaviors that they accused men of does feel like they, like they want that right they, they want it's that. not it's, about it always feels like payback and never about yeah. actually making changes yeah and my issue with this i mean i have several but my biggest issue with this is what i feel what happened with g4 is the same thing i feel that happened with the daily show is that listen you can get gener- genuinely talent talented charismatic and interesting gamers of all sexes races creeds and religion mm-hmm. you genuinely can but it's almost as if they're never looking for that. Yeah. They're just looking for the person that's the most ethnic within their ethnicity. Like they and they never think they never think of how well they mesh together. Because the beauty of, about G4 is was they were all cool. They were all charismatic. They all knew what they were talking about. And when they didn't know what they were talking about, they would defer to the other to kind of take control of that part. Does it feel like there's a lot of contempt for the audience too? Not as much anymore. But during that week, because I, I was tuning in a, a, like pretty on and off, like somewhat regularly, because I love the brand. And I don't want to be this guy on the show that's just constantly like, oh, I hate this, I hate that. I love g4 tv like some of my like fondest moments as a teen was laughing out loud with x-play reviews and skits that were genuinely funny and attack of the show and all all these things and it's it just sucks time and time again where this global niceness culture propaganda it has to take president over the content every single time you can't go back i, I don't think you can go back I, i'm uh, i think i'm actually vehemently against any reboot or rehash of something i don't think it works uh i think that we are a culture that's that chases nostalgia now very heavily uh that's what they're doing with almost everything that's rebooted these days i don't think you go back i think we're get, that's how it got us into the situation that we're in now uh it's the revival of ip it's the mining of IP for properties where, at the very least, do something different. Like you said, you can't make the you can't just come back to a new world and create yeah. the same show. They made um, the mistake of not adapting 
back at the point when Olivia Munn left. Yeah. Yep. That's when the mistake started. It probably started before that because this history of laying off people and like massive layoffs and budget cuts, it's been the history of G4 since the dawn of time. Yeah. They like when the show or when the channel originally began, all their content was around gaming and they had a bunch of shows and a bunch of original creators. And it was honestly groundbreaking. It was incredible. Mm. They, they had like a call in show. They have multiple review shows. They had like an insider person in the industry. They had one just exclusively about trailers. They had one that was like the top 10 list. And if you think about YouTube now and channels now, there's singular channels devoided to every single one of these genres, but they had it all in one. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it, it, I'm telling you, it was incredible. I think the internet becoming democratized has led to people coming away, uh, moving away from stuff like this that feels more corporatized and going towards individuals who are doing it on their own time uh, in a way that feels more organic to the people, whether it is or it isn't. Um, and I feel that nostalgia is, no, is misunderstood right now. People don't necessarily want to watch their old shows. People just want a moment in time where they weren't being beaten over the head as they were being entertained. Will never happen again because you're aware of it. Now that you're aware of it, now that it's keenly in the back of your mind, you will catch to every... Even now, I can go back and watch things where I, I catch things that I didn't catch before. It doesn't ru ruin the show as a whole, but now that you know that it's happening, that you know that that is the tendency of these producers, these writers, these directors, and these actors, you will never have a time where you will... Co Cobra Kai might be the best example I can give of an example uh, of something that's come back from a previous incarnation, but it's so different from the movies to call it the same thing as is laughable. It's not. It's not the movies. And it's but got at least the fans of the original movies support. also love Cobra Kai. And because they pay great respect to the main characters and to the original story. They, they, don't, they don't make anybody out to be less than f uh, in favor of new characters, right? So yeah. Miyagi, who passed away well before uh, the show ever came out, is treated with great deference and, and respect mm -hmm. in that show. Uh, Daniel and uh, like the main characters are Daniel not necessarily good are aren't necessarily good guys or bad guys. They're just characters that are done very very intently. And I don't think you can go back to something like this, which was just such a picture, with such a snapshot of a of a time, and recreate that magic. I, I don't, don't think you can go back to that time, but I think we can get out of this. I think we can get because wokeness or whatever. It came in a second. It was just like a tidal wave. Yep. And it, it came from a stimuli or it was planned or I don't know. But it came hard and it stayed hard. But well, wow, that sounds horrible. <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyway, it came that. that. Um. <laughs> I will. But um, the, the issue is I think just as easily as it came in like a wrecking ball, Sorry, I'm just now. I'm just trying to be cheesy. Um, uh, it, right. it can leave. It's never happened to me. It can leave. I swear. Like, people are sick of it. Be everyone's sick of it. Everyone, okay. but I don't. I don't think anyone at this point likes it. Wokeness aside, though, they haven't been business smart, and there's been a continued disregard and or contempt for the not public facing staff members that's continued all the way from the inception of this company. Um, and they her feigned hurt that. about it on the day of, like they said, we lost some really talented and amazing people that are honestly family to us where we, we were all crying. We were all devastated, which is why we could not do a show yesterday when the layoffs Lying. happened. Emotions were high and it was the right call to cancel it. So maybe that was true for some of their staff, but Frost clearly doesn't give an F about the people that were laid off and was a smarmy, self-righteous C-word about it. Yep. <laughs> and it's simply because the public-facing staff were uh, allowed to continue their job and the people who were absolutely vital to keeping the shows going and that's all they care about so it's not just wokeness that 
uh, I guess, sabotaged them from the very beginning. I also want to point out. No, that it was growing. It, it, it was the self-righteousness, as you said. It was G4 the- TV breaks its silence on layoff rumors. And what's really funny about this is they go out of their way to not mention Frost's rant. They, 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 go out, they, they sure as hell mention the Amaranth segment. Uh, in which uh, the people who would have run opposite to Frost uh, were like, "Oh, great!" Because it, it, uh, it reminded them of a previous time when the with uh, hot women and uh, hot women in ball pit seems right on brand. But that was men- the brand. They mentioned that here that that caused an uproar, but they don't mention what she said before. And then they're like, "We have no idea why uh, why the company is once again struggling." So it says, "Gone but not forgotten." Many viewers missed the network, fondly recalling favorite episodes of X Player Attack of the show. But then the unexpected happened. After a clear and continued interest in the older show. Uh, in the older shows, G4 relaunched in 2021 with the catastrophic launch spectacular. Since then, G4 is powered up in a big way by partnering with YouTube TV. Uh, along the way, it's even attracted big name guests like Amaranth, whose appearance caused an uproar with the viewers. Wrong. Okay. It caused an uproar with the people who would have been directly opposed to the stuff that uh, Amar- that Frost was saying before. The people who 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 would have liked this wouldn't have cared would have would have hated the stuff that frost was saying but they never mentioned that here they just make it seem like now there's financial difficulties was it because of amaranth in a ball pit we may never know when anybody who pays even the slightest bit of attention knows that that wasn't the case i just want to say again as a fan can you please just stop hating us you know we don't hate we don't intrinsically hate you we're your fans like we are the people you want us to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, just... Well, you know who they hate even more than the fans? Hot women. Yes, they do. They like, really do they are almost ideologically opposed to putting attractive, not just women, but anyone attractive in any conventional sense in front of the camera yep. at this company. Well, because you're promoting sexism and misogyny or something. But there when is... it really has nothing to do with your gender. It's literally just like, what do people want to see? People if want you to have see a hot... rudimentary yep. knowledge of marketing, like our marketing man extraordinaire here, you know what people want to see. Conventionally attractive people talking about their interests. And yep. charismatic as well. Because yes. they're constantly talking about how awkward they are. Well, right, and almost taking pride in it. That's, yeah, like like a, it's like that's so strange. They think that's still the brand. That was that was at one point something that could have been marketed in an okay way where you could like, look at this. You're not used to seeing kind of awkward people on uh, on your screen. Well, you can be quirked up, but you, yeah. you have to actually be likable too. Yeah. And they do not match those boxes, yeah. right? You can be quirky, but you also have to have a likable personality. I and harp not on that hate all the, the audience. I harp on that all the time. It feels weird to me that the bare minimum you're asking for is that you don't treat the people who pay your bills like garbage. For mm-hmm. real. And also they were treating the people that made this whole production possible like garbage yep they've just thrown them out so how can you continue with the same level of production quality and the same content when you've just gotten rid of like half your staff in in fairness the the amount of staff they had for the for the shows that they have did seem excessive that's 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 my opinion and i'm sorry i'm sorry if you if you worked on the show and like, I bet what, what I'm saying is triggering the hell out of you. Corporate structure does kind of lend itself to redundancy right. and overstaffing. But that's, I mean, that doesn't make it any easier for them to go through this and then have Frost say, uh, I survived. <laughs> Let's go play some games. Yeah. Right. But when they, supposedly everyone in the office was crying their I'm eyes sure out about were. it. The yeah. issue, I think, with G4 is that. They're always like, we're going to revive it. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. And the way to do this is throwing money at the wall. And why can't anyone just start from the ground up? Dude, do what you can. Do, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. This doesn't work because it uh, wow. it, it, it wasn't rebooted from the ground up. And it's uh, you're trying to recapture magic that isn't there. If you had taken uh, talented people. And, and use the same amount of money and infrastructure to try and rebuild something new with fresh ideas, that would probably be better off than trying to revive something that clearly isn't working or resonating with modern audiences. Yeah, the 
revival of not only the company itself but the exact same programs uh is a mistake imagine like 10 years from now me and you were like let's revive like one day pop culture crisis goes off the air yeah like what if we're like in in the our middle age point in life and we're like let's bring back pop culture crisis i'm like i come in with a cane and a walker and I sit down, I'm like, all right, guys. Well, no, really, actually, the the proper analogy would be, what if we eventually end this show, and then a decade after that, the company decides to bring back Pop Culture Crisis, except with two people who are nothing like us. With Rhett who aren't, and Barry. Who aren't likable, <laughs> who aren't conventionally attractive who actually go out of their way to look bad on camera. Well, to be fair, who go I'm out of their way. Tra- I'm not conventionally attractive, but that's fine. <laughs> People who are like awkward, who aren't, who hate the audience, who aren't interested in pop culture. Welcome to episode t- 455. You losers. Why would you tune into us? We don't want you here. That's what they would say. Yeah. And then, um, they expect it to have the same results. Yep. That's because they, they, they have a fundamental... I don't know if it's like they have a fundamental misunderstanding of what actually works or if they just didn't know that a rant like that was going to happen and then doubled down because can you really tell her she's wrong? And going back to Gamergate, as it always comes always back to... Comes always comes back, back to Gamergate. Gamergate. What was Gamergate? Gamergate was, hi, we're not from your world and we're going to take it over. And gamers being the hell you are. Right, and that's what this felt. She is not of this world. She didn't. She did. She didn't feel like a G four person. She didn't have that. Doesn't have like the moxie, the charisma. Uh, Who does anymore, really? Yeah, Dane I Font. Mean, pleasure uh, to meet you. Also, I, <laughs> but, um, I, I imagine everybody in the chat right now is like, "We're not coming back for that reunion," but then they secretly come back because they actually don't want us here. They want people that are mean to them. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, oh. I'm mean to waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps coming back. You're mean to me because I like waffles better than pancakes. I mean, well, it's because I love you and you're wrong, Mary. You're trying but to it, but for fraternally it really instruct that, me. Yeah. Is it really that hard to just not be a jerk to people? Like that, it that is for people. literally, yes. <laughs> like for these media personalities, they aren't money driven. They are message driven. That bothers me. Why don't people want to make money anymore? They don't. They don't. I what do. happened? I have no idea. <laughs> is this a symptom of recession that just nobody wants to make a profit off of anything anymore? It's so easy. Surge There's says, a vacuum in, in the market. Surge says, I'll be there. I'll be here. LOL. I, I, I want, I, now I want to fast forward. I want a time machine kind of to see if. Until they, we, they hire Rhett and Barry. Yeah, Rhett and Barry uh, bring back a <laughs> popular cultured crisis episode 5000. Uh, and we have to like uh, me and you are like watching on a stream. Like I call you, I'm like, can you see what's on the internet? And you're like, what's on the internet? And then I I send you a link, and then it's it's not even on YouTube. It's at in that the point. metaverse. It's in the metaverse. Yeah. So you have to wear like, uh, and you're like, I don't have any of those newfangled metaverse goggles or whatever they end. Up, you they need like Neuralink to watch yeah. the new version of Pop Culture Crisis. <laughs> and, and me and you in are 2045. Just, and me and you are just being like curmudgeons and uh, and just really mean. Like look at them. They don't even know they're talking about It'd be great I'm, I'm down we're ready to do this i don't know if i want to live in this dystopian future i, I we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it and uh and we're gonna and then we're gonna lead a, an online brigade against our own show that we used to that we were used to be on we're gonna we're gonna fight back but it wouldn't be you it'd Look, be barry you know just i mean, I, I'm, I have at least the solace of knowing We'll get more super chats than the future Perhaps. pop culture oh, crisis uh, hosts. I mean, maybe, <laughs> because, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe if they have money back, maybe mo- money will be gone by that point and they won't even need it. I don't know. You can't, with this situation, it's just like people don't want to make money anymore and they don't want to make anything good and they don't yeah. like the audience. Do you think people just burnt out? Just, like because of the internet being what it is, people are just burnt out. Like you're, you're kind of always, oh, okay. Um, you're always, you have to always be present. You have to always be accountable for what you say and do. You have to always be this and that. Like, do you, do you think that there's just a certain amount of burnout that people are feeling? I think it's one of my favorite mm. Brett Dasovic quotes is, um, everyone acts like they're running for president. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. And I think it's that. I think everyone, even us in a way, even though we're real ass, 
we're like there, there's a part of us that knows that we we can't express everything a hundred percent because of our media overloads See, because i'm kind of an awful person so no, yeah sure. you guys don't know that brett's uh, a monster i i'm kind of an awful person uh, yeah so, so i i tend to well uh, right now we are like on set yes yeah you have that's to be. and that's completely different from our private conversations because it has to be and mm. i wish it didn't have to be that way oh god and i, I totally understand why like if you try to see it from Frost's perspective, there are annoying people on the internet yeah. who don't get it, yeah. who want to, you know, armchair about how you should run things like that. And it sucks to be called sucks. ugly, you know. No. But also, like, you're not doing yourself any favors by making them hate you more. I just don't get the motivations behind what they're doing anymore. Um, but on that note, Let's go to super chats, okay, I guess. No, before we go, I was gonna say, like, does this like does this kind of bum you because it was such a cultural touchstone to you at the time? I loved it, dude. So and, is I, there, and, I, and I know it's. Did never, you know about it back in that? Time? I, I I didn't watch it, did but watch I, it? I knew what okay. it was. But 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 so that, at that time, culture was so much less uh, widespread because of the uh, the internet wasn't as much of a thing. Meme so, review on cable television sounds like heaven. Yeah, to me. Like, it but, was. but like at the, like at that time, you know, you had your jackass, you had yeah, you all these things yeah. that were like we kind of talked earlier about how like the idea like there's no shared culture anymore because the internet's kind of ruined it, right? Mm. old wise tales and aunts telling you something is true was the greatest part about being a person and it's gone now because you just fact check them instantly and it's ruining society Every, here's the thing if your aunt tells you something now I demand you just take it as fact and you don't fact check her she's like your beard stop gonna, googling stop <laughs> googling it. if your aunt tells you your beard I don't know how this is related to G4 TV but I'm anymore saying, but I'm totally behind we it we had shared culture back then because everybody watched the same 5 to 10 channels on sure. cable right so now with everything being so uh, widespread because there's just so much to watch there's no shared values anymore. There's no shared uh, experience. So uh, they're getting what? They're getting like 300 uh, views per like uh, live stream, right? For a channel that was as big as it was at one point, they should be getting way more than that because they were so important. It's almost it does it's, it's, a, it's a disservice to what they meant to society well, beforehand. The problem is that what was marketable in 2002 remains marketable today because human psychology has, has not, not changed, changed yep. in the last 20 years sex, or the last thousand years sex still sells or the last you like 10 thousand it, it it's the same thing it's there's a class of consultants mm -hmm. and commentators and journalists getting in the way anti-fun who, who are anti-fun and mm -hmm. also I, I apparently anti-profit and this is a problem with hollywood too like uh, there was an article the other day uh, remember when we covered the John Oliver thing about them, him like the, uh, they were talking about law and order and like why is it uh, why do you make the show like this when it's not like this in the real world right uh, and then they were saying and then McKelty Williams goes dude it's entertainment you're not allowed to just make entertainment anymore you're not allowed to just make stuff with sex appeal anymore it has to have some you type need of to message use your platform for, for good. good and frankly that's stupid yeah I, I say it. you should not have to use your platform for good you use it for able, evil you can use your platform <laughs> for evil if you so choose <laughs> we, I don't have hey I can't tell people whether what to do with their platform but I know that telling people that they have to use their platform for a certain reason is something that only a dork would say so Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Based. Don't don't tell people that. Yeah, stop being a dork. Stop being dork. Stop Frost. being a dork. That's you guys, if you guys could just be stop being such nerds and dorks and let people sell you beautiful people doing fun stuff on their TVs in the internet, the world would be better for it. And we used to be a country where we had From hot chicks playing games. That, it was a thing. It was a beautiful thing. And we can we could do it again. We make yes, G4 we, TV great again. Yes, can we? we can. No, well, maybe I mean, not G4 TV, but yes, we can make that great again somehow. There we go. Bob the Builder. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Johnny Derp said, oh, I don't know if I want to say that. Do it. <laughs> Whack-a-mole equals rodent glory hole. That is all. <laughs> there Thank you, go. you. Thank you. That is okay. spicing up the day today. <laughs> Topher Abbey said, happy international talk like a pirate day and happy birthday to me as well. Wow. Hell yeah. Happy birthday. Wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I didn't know that that was uh, the international yeah, day today. 
Thousand Foot Deep End said, on the subject of series reboots, I saw today that Quantum Leap is getting a reboot. Yep, they, they what are. What isn't getting a reboot? No now? Scott Bakula in the Quantum Leap reboot, as far as I know. I was never a Quantum Leap watcher, so maybe I can watch the new one and not hate it, but I doubt it. Uh, I put on anything now, and I just get anxiety knowing how they're going to ruin everything that they make. But perhaps I should go back. I have seen some of Quantum uh, Quantum Leap, of course, but I didn't watch it regularly. Obviously, it was before my time. Clint said, like Tony Soprano said, remember when is the lowest form of conversation? Nostalgia. Nostalgia is the lowest form of, uh, of all of this stuff now, and Hollywood is addicted to it. They are. I mean, I, I feel like nostalgia done. could yeah. be done right, yeah. possibly. I used to think so. I don't think so anymore. I mean, think about I, Sonic. Think about Sonic Different too. medium. Different medium. Not the same thing as... So in film it's possible, but... Uh, l- like, um, you're taking game... Not with network And those games are still a thing, in, the, in that like that's still got a dedicated fan base with okay. current material. So I don't know if that's necessarily the same thing. Though, that know. might be a fair argument. You know, there, there was a great Pokemon animated series on YouTube that it really built on nostalgia because it was a show that played on all the mistakes... And lessons that gamers would make when they were playing Pokemon originally. Like, for example, they would try to catch the Pokemon uh, of, of other trainers. And it's like, you can't do that, you know? And they would do lines from the game and mistakes that people would make. And, like, having one super high level one and a bunch of wimps uh, until you learn how to actually play. And, that, like, seeing that show and, and seeing the show... The, the the animated series make the same mistakes that I would make. Oh my goodness! It it was a rush to watch it, and that's how I think you can, you know, you can do nostalgia again. It 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 brings you back to a time and it pays respect to it instead of being like we're better now because we're the best. Then it's almost impossible to do with the corporate structure because corporate structure won't allow it to feel authentic. They don't even want money anymore. Like pick a side. They don't want money. They're like anti money. Yeah. We yeah. want money. <laughs> Yes, we love your money. Love I love money. <laughs> Waffle Sensei said, well, the problem is that they go back to what was nostalgic yeah. to reboot it, but the cult is in charge, so now it's time for a modern reimagining. Yep. And that's always be deathly afraid of that word, reimagining. Yeah, yeah. What that means is uh, fun removal service. It really <laughs> does. You're, you're not allowed to be fun anymore. Surgical removal of all fun and games. Uh, they're like, I saw somebody laugh and smile. Stop that. Stop that right there. No laughing. Guards. No smiling. <laughs> Stop them. No happiness. Bradley Allen said, It honestly hurt to see G4 go woke. I grew up on it. I watched it every day after school. It's, it's Same. It's it's very depressing. It's, but, 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 but like I said, not all that hard to believe. Did anybody really think any of this stuff would happen, wouldn't happen when a corporate structure gets involved? I think they, everyone knew that it would. There's, I, I'm trying to think if there's any reboots that are coming out that I'm excited for, and I don't think there are. But like, if they do, you should go into anything, whether it's a TV show about video games, uh, or in this case, uh, I guess now streaming shows about... Everything new is derivative now. Exactly. So... Thank you. If you do it right, it's definitely the exception, not the rule. Exactly. I need to stop watching YouTube, said Mike Pence is literally a coin being traded, talked about in the Bible and the Dead Sea Scrolls, turn of millennia, Trump literally has a time machine. I think you need to take this over to the IRL chat because I don't know what you're talking about. There is a, we, there is a show that, that we uh, were affiliated with called Timcast IRL. It's a, it's a great new yeah. show. They're doing big things over there. They're, they're very, very motivated. They're ambitious. You should go support them. They're on at 8 p.m. right here on YouTube. I think that guy Tim's yeah. going to be a star one day. He, he has the, I'm predicting he has, it. He has a future ahead of him. We policy. hope that they surpass us one day. <laughs> if he plays his cards right. We're kind of like G4 TV. Yeah. And they're like X-Play. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> Caper 2X said, send Mary to G4, watch their little pinheads explode. Oh my I don't God. think they're brains. And he said, only to find out how many kids Mary's, Mary has? I don't what? have kids. I don't know what you I mean. don't think that they could <laughs> process that uh, that a, a girl like Mary actually exists. I, oh I don't think goodness. that. I, I think all the women out there pro- that are on, that are working there are probably of the same belief system. So I think somebody coming confronting them head, lo- head on with far different beliefs in them would be almost too shocking for them. Mm. I think they seem like dedicated to the hive mind. Mm. 
and uh, also like it seems to be almost. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. My goodness, thank you. Almost entirely so millennial. Yes. So yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be welcome there. Well, like, even then, then they're like, no, they would probably assume that somebody being Gen Z would be more so than them. Yeah, but and they're gonna find out the hard way. They're handing this off to uh, a generation that's not exactly on the same page. It's been so long. It feels so nice. Thank you. Bobcat said, here is a question. What happened to style? Part of being charismatic is looking good. So why do so many people dress like crap? I would have to know what, uh, what good the, point. Uh, and style is to be fair, fairly subjective yeah. depending on the person. So you'd have to ask like, like the, I have friends who are the only person that could wear that like their style of clothing, right? I nobody, agree. nobody else that I know would be able to pull it off mm -hmm. because it, uh, the feelings it evokes because you know them seems to kind of mesh with who they are as a person. So, uh, I, I have a friend who, um, he wears business, like he wears business casual all the time, but he's also like a, a pretty serious dude who also just happens to have a good sense of humor. I have other friends who are less serious people that don't dress that way. I, f I feel like it should say something about who you are as a person. Um, and that there isn't really a universal answer to that question. Like what is style? It's about how the confidence in which you wear what you wear. I think there's something to be said for looking distinctive, but also as we can tell, like if you belong to a hive mind mentally and everyone has to be in ideological lockstep, how is anyone going to look different then? Look at that. Like, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, I never knew in this photo of Ezra Miller, he had a sword. Like they always cropped this photo before. Why is he wearing a sword? I love the torn up fishnet stocking. Yes. Um, style King. He or, really is a style King. Yes. Uh, King or our non-binary King. King. Yes. He was called. Uh, but the point is that yes, uh, uh, you know, commit to the bit. Also like if you're, uh, pathologically self-hating and narcissistic, um, it shows through in how you look and that's why no one conventionally attractive is behind the camera. Yep. Or sorry, in front of the camera. Do you think at G4 TV, do, this would be, I mean, Gina Darling's pretty good. Logan. This would be a funny skit. Which like one? Gina Darling, the Asian lady. Oh, okay. okay. This would be a funny skit. Like they show like a thing where it's like the, it's like they're filming. It's like a documentary behind the scenes at G4 TV and all the people filming stuff are just chads, super Jack tall, strong jawline. All the, like the producers that are women are all just like total smoke show tens. And then the people in front of the camera are just like, what the frick? Kevin, this is backwards. Kevin Pereira. What's going on? Kevin Pereira is decent looking. I okay. Think. There you go. Dude. There you I go. But you gotta have some hot women. For sure. They're it's, slacking. Th this is not rocket science, people. It really Hot isn't. Women. It really is Hot women. I need to stop watching YouTube said cameras everywhere, always liable, micro aware. Yep. Yep. There are cameras. Yeah. Well, and plus Mary's the fed here, so we're always very acutely aware. I'm of wearing a wire. At all times. Yeah. Uh, so I'm always, you know, whatever Mary says, I tend to take as like uh, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Uh, and I, I just choose to think of it I'm as always like, just seeing if you take the bait. Yeah, but basically. you know what? Me and Brett already signed the plea deal, so <laughs> exactly. we're gonna go, baby. We're gonna boys. we're gonna get out of this when this when, yeah. they, Let's when go. it all hits the fan. We're riding off into the sunset with uh, when you the when the deposition sweetheart happens. plea deal from the and then boom, you're all set. And then boom, witness protection for me and Dane. <laughs> Base. Carnell <laughs> said, "Hail PCC and the fellow crisis actors." Here's to the best blondes covering pop culture on the interwebs. Dane, your Giga Chad contributions are great. Uh, the Dane's Giga Chadness actually is what allows him to not be blonde and still be part of I this. I love that I our shtick is that we're blonde. We're like we're totally the blonde. I'm blonde. Oh my blonde. gosh. You're not blonde. Yeah, I'm dirty blonde. No, you're not. Yeah. No. You are brunette. We need to get an expert opinion. I'm going to need somebody to look at the screen right now and tell me if that is in fact Dirty blonde. Okay. Dane is doing his thing where he starts some kind of fight on the show. No, I, I generally. You are not a blonde. He incites arguments. It's like you are not a blonde for his own entertainment. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe I used to be. You are maybe when you were young, but you are now a uh, brunette or. Dark I think hair. the answer to this is that you also need to bleach your hair. Isn't that yes? No let's way. go beard. And that. eventually, every guest will have to bleach no, their hair. No, 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 no. It's no. mandatory. I offer, it just becomes part of the show. I offered yeah. the macarena for thirty. Super like 
we put like parties. a little we put like a sink over there. And then, and then just like per, like yeah. whenever people come on the show, we just matter of fact they say, "Oh, in the dye, in the in the bleach, it's over there. Just uh, let us know when you're done." And then we just go back to work and pretend mm-hmm. like that's totally normal. Although yeah. I'd love to give a rendition of "Total Eclipse of the Heart," the literal version. No, the real Pan one. And the room. I don't think I could do the literal version justice. Uh, the, if anybody hasn't seen the the video to literal version of uh, "Total Eclipse of the Heart." Uh, it's one of the most incredible things. It's when the internet was when we were a country and the internet was a thing and the world was just better. Let's be a country again, guys. Let's, let's do hot it. Hot chicks on television. It's th- hot so, chicks on television and unregulated internet. Let's go. Let's put the That's doors behind platform. the cameras. Yep. Yeah. It's so easy. All, yeah, all they have to do is just rotate everyone <laughs> out. They just take the people from behind the camera and then they just put them in front and the people in front of the well, camera. Well, they just, just fired a bunch of them, so it's impossible. Problem. Yeah. Darth Doza said, running between meetings, but wanted to say, Brett, that the review input you had on E205, what is that? Episode Episode 205. 205. Oh, episode 205 about the whale was really, really good. Thanks a lot, dude, and have a great day slash evening. Also, by the way, I asked the question, and thank you, by the way, for for that. But uh, I asked a question. I said, we've had the Maconnaissance. We've had the Kianaissance. I said, what would the Brendan Fraser one be? And somebody said, the Brennaissance, of course. Br- the Brennaissance? Because his name's Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Well, people are saying I'm blown. Well, it wouldn't, wouldn't it be the Brendanaissance? No, I think, you can cl- I think you can cap it earlier. I mean, the, you can call it the fraser sans, but it doesn't have the same ring to no, it. Brennaissance it it sounds pretty good. Yeah. Crispy Lake Transport LLC said they're going to ruin Quant- Quantum Leap. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, plus it's network TV, and network TV now is... If you think, like, regular Hollywood is woke, uh, the, the reason wokeness slips in... And I hate that word. Again, I hate that word. The reason yeah. it slips into television is because when, when it's not condensed down into less episodes, they run out of stuff to talk about, and then they get into this garbage. And a show like that, which it'll be 16 to 24 episodes... You know, they might get through season one. You know, you do the pilot over and over again. It's great. You just, it's, it's awesome. But then after that, they're like, we're running out of stuff to talk about. Well, uh, let's, and then it becomes garbage. Mm-hmm. So that's what's going to happen. Thousand Foot Deep End said, tomorrow's my birthday, but I probably won't get to watch live. <gasps> can I please get an early happy birthday shout out? Of course you can. Love you guys. <laughs> happy birthday, dude. Like, happy that's birthday. Happy Why early, do we I have guess, so many birthdays today? I know. What were all of your parents doing? Yeah, nine, nine months, months ago. It was a sexy time. It was a sexy time. <laughs> Must have been. What, 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 what would nine Back months? Back when hot chicks were on TV <laughs> and it's, we had unregulated internet. This, this is why the birth rate ah. repl- is below replacement now. It's because there's not hot chicks on TV. It was Christmas. There you go. Is that why? Okay. Well, that, that was, oh, there was another story. Like I was looking at that earlier where it's like, they said like uh, a lot of sexy L's. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> like, like, uh, like what, when does Halloween fall for birth, uh, for, for people's birthday? Like how many mistakes have been made because of skanky Halloween costumes? <laughs> oh, so many, so yeah. many, so many, so many kids who are just like who are, whose mom wants to has to come up with some story about how some gallant young man took her to a, a pumpkin patch and then um, on an amazing first date when really they just got sloppy drunk at a party and now Aww. children. Well, Too now real. people time their conceptions based on astrological signs, which is a so. problem. The uh, watch out. That's for, like the new eugenicism. <laughs> watch out for the crystal chicks, dudes. You don't want nothing. If she asks you your uh, what time you were born, run, run the opposite way. Get to the door and then find another door between you and that door. Is Ian a crystal chick? Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Or he, <laughs> uh, could we have like a crystal chicken outside? We don't crystal have crystal chi- chicken. That's yeah. so. Funny. Have you guys seen that headshot of Ian in the office? Yeah. God, Ian's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, he's a handsome man. He's incredible. Beautiful man. Handsome man. Inside and out. Oh. <laughs> Nathan Settlemeyer said, quote, people like Mary, unquote, LOL. <laughs> Did I say people like Mary? Like a, is that like a slur? I was like, I was like, and then people like Is that a like microaggression? You, people like you. <laughs> no, I think he means people like her, like people similar to her. And the implication is that there isn't. So the, the joke is either people like Mary because Mary. Or that there's no one like me. Or that, the, yeah. I or, think it was that one. No, I thought it was like, it was because I said like, imagine like G4 TV imagining that, people, someone that like women Mary, like yeah. Mary even actually exist. Well, it, the thing is that. We don't. Yeah, it's just very, me. She 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 just said that she's uh she's a rare she's a rare breed. I mean, we're working on cloning her. The science we're, just isn't there. <laughs> Lane said, "Brett fashion stream spinoff." When? Hey, I get 
We need your fashion advice. The vlog it. used to be all comments about how I was <laughs> H&M guy with my long shirts. But you know what? Are they known for long shirts at H&M? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they make shirts like that, but that's uh -huh. not where I get mine. But like the point is, I got a lot of crap for my unique fashion sense. But you know what? If you like what you look like, if you like your clothes, then more power to you. Dress however you want. Like I said, uh, in the show Chuck... Chuck never looked more awesome than when he was wearing his uh, buy more uh, geek squad type uniform with his pe with his pocket protector and his white uh, short sleeve button up shirt and his black pants. He looks like a total dweeb, but he's in his glory. You know what works for you. Exactly. Exactly. Go with it. Waffle Sensei said Dane is as blonde as much as Ben Affleck is good at playing Batman. Figure that one out. Uh, so what you're saying Guess is I'm Dane is very, very, nope. very, 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 very blonde. <laughs> is what you're saying. And I have to disagree with you. You don't even I believe I love that they're this. clued in enough to the beef that they're the ones starting it now. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Ben Affleck as Batman. <laughs> Dude. Anyway, guys, uh, I hub our waffle. Uh, uh, waffle House. Okay. Before we move on, I want to say I have IHOP trauma, and trauma? that's why Waffle House is superior. Oh, uh, why? What was your? Oh, do you want to share your I, your <laughs> IHOP trauma? Um, <laughs> let's just say that the waiter had some innuendos about biscuits and gravy, and I didn't appreciate it one bit. That Mary did not like, which is that's interesting too, because Mary's one of the least um, squeamish people that I've <laughs> I've come to know. So it must have been. Pretty bad. I'm just saying, like, I was with a table of fellow high schoolers at the time, and I don't think that's acceptable. It's very, very wrong. It's they, scandalized. They put me, chocolate to chip in pancakes, and they have four different flavors for their syrup. I rest my case. Waffle Boo. House. It's not Who a uses blueberry syrup anyway? Nobody. That's so gross. Nobody. This Dane guy. Do well, you, wow. You don't like Dane Dane They give you like five saying? pancakes. You can try all the syrups. Doesn't even like Ben Affleck as Batman. What the hell does no he know? No one does, Brett. No Zero one does. taste. Zero taste. Zero taste. Oh, you like Ben Affleck as Batman? She doesn't have any opinion on that. She I have no opinion right. on that. I just think that blueberry syrup is disgusting. Don't lie to me, Mary. You know we speak telepathically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Waffle House over IHOP. Personally, anytime. Personally. Anytime. Your family at Waffle House and at IHOP, you are nothing but a faceless customer. Have you ever seen that picture of like, <laughs> who is it? Like somebody with. Uh, I wish that was their campaign marketing. <laughs> it's like somebody. It's like, a fa it's, like, it's like a famous person at Waffle House with Post Malone. And they refer to them as like, look at them feeding this homeless person. But it's like Post Malone and he's not homeless. It's obviously a very. Waffle House tastes how Post Malone looks. Oh, no. Leave Post Malone. He just had a bad accident. Did you see that? That he really? fell off like. He had like he fell like really far oh, yeah, off the stage. Oh yeah, he fell on stage. And, yeah. oh, because he does concerts drunk. Like that's you can't do that. He's been doing it for years. And to be fair, Mary has pointed that out before that that bothers her. That that like you're not just like saying that now. Like that you're like he shouldn't do that before. Yeah, I, that literally is like a problem. Yeah. Also, they got a, like a pecan syrup. It's freaking phenomenal. Gross. What's that got to do with Post Malone? What? <laughs> I bet it tastes like a melted Yankee candle. Ew. I mean, now I want to go to Hobby Lobby. Let's go to Hobby Lobby after What's this. Hobby Lobby? Man, you he's not. Hobby you Lobby? Well, you, first of you all. You truly what, are uncultured. What that has done is prove that you are, in fact, not a basic bitch. You're, cool. Okay. That's, so that's fine. But we'll take you to a hobby. Have you ever seen those Live, Laugh, Love plaques? Oh, yeah. It's the home of Live, Laugh, Love Oh, God. Plaques. I don't want to <laughs> be there. It's actually where they're birthed, born, <laughs> and replicated for all of public consumption. Dude, I, I instantly... It's personal hell. Yes. I instantly knew a relationship was not going to last because I saw that on their wall. I was oh, like, no. oof. That's, that's a sign that they're an absolute psychopath. It's like, it's, like having be kind in your it's like having be kind in your Twitter profile. It means that you're absolutely the least kind person you've ever met. Like there's nobody like there's nobody more likely to yell at you and be mean than somebody who has a it costs nothing to be kind in their actual profile of social media. They're going to be mean to you and you're going to have to pretend like you like Hobby it. Lobby? Hobby Lobby. So uh, they got in a, they got in a lot Never? of trouble at one point because they were like cause they're, they're, it's just like Chick fil A. Like people found out the founders weren't woke enough and then they're, they got it's mad a religious about. company and they're Christians. They well, offer they like they, they offer like like you can get it's sort of like Michael's, but run by Christians. Yep. Michael's yeah. is incredible. I love Michael's. Me too. Yeah. I can't believe Dane has an opinion on Michael's. All I remember about Michael's is that where I got. That's I, where I got. I have a master's in arts. Dane has an opinion about everything. He's just always wrong. 
<laughs> I, a, I, ben Affleck. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> also, I, uh, Michael's is where I got my first Tamagotchi when I was a kid. Oh, Tamagotchi. Interesting. Cool. Still have one. <laughs> Nathan Settlemeyer said G string Macarena. 30 crisis parties? What? Definitely not. What happened while I was Definitely gone? Definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> Let's go. Johnny Derp said, <laughs> no. you asked, Brett, according to my pops, I was conceived on Christmas Eve. There are typically more babies conceived in the winter. Stay warm, folks. Yep, people don't want to feel okay. cold and alone. <laughs> Therefore, babies get made. It happens. It makes sense. It happens. All right, guys, we're moving on. We are going to talk about Kanye West and the Donda Academy. Mary, do you want to lead this one for us? Sure. I mean, I am intensely interested because Kanye is starting this as a Christian private school. Now, weirdly, um, they've had a lot of staffing changes and they were hiring up to like a week before, before the school started. real <laughs> doesn't seem year like, started. Doesn't um, seem like that gives you enough time to write up a curriculum, but what do I know? No, and it's under intense scrutiny, ju not just because people uh, have, you know, reasons they dislike Kanye, but also people have a problem with any Christian uh, institution. Yeah, I didn't think of that. To begin with. Yeah. So he's under uh, intense watch right now. And it's said that all of the parents and staff and consultants involved in this project are under um, non-disclosure agreements. Now, they're saying it's informal, but so far there's no comment from any of the people involved, any of the students, any of the parents, any of the teachers. Um, we only know that they have uh, a woman named Brianne Campbell as the principal and uh, another woman I think named Allison, uh, I forget her last name, but there's a vice principal that we know the name of. Brianne Campbell has no background in education. in education. She's also uh, quite young to be in her position. She's 28. And wow. she's currently in uh, in a program to get a, a formal education so that she's uh, able to get this school accredited. See, I kind of like the This school is not currently accredited they expect to be accredited in the spring t next year i like the non-traditional i mean maybe it ends up being a humongous disaster it but, sounds like it could be though but our educational system is already a functional oh, disaster yeah. so i say go ahead and try this is interesting because it's a continuation of um kanye's uh beef with <laughs> kim sending their kids to sierra canyon which is a calabasas private school it's secular mm -hmm. and he wants his kids to be exclusively attending donda academy because he personally called out sierra canyon for being woke and he, he indoctrinating kids he considered it into 50 50 then he was like half donda half sierra academy yeah um so the kids just have to make twice <laughs> as many friends and it, see them half as as often. Yeah, I hope it's not just like his way of, uh, I guess. Thank you. Stoking an argument with Kim and something he genuinely believes in. Um, there are about a hundred students enrolled right now. Uh, some of whom are like related to public figures. Like one of them is a uh, an influencer's kid. <laughs> Um, I think Keisha Cole is also mm -hmm. sending her child there. You think he like um, offered them like contracts, <laughs> like scholarships, like send your kids here? Yeah. So it has a fifteen thousand dollar a year tuition for students who are not receiving financial aid, and about half of the students attending right now are receiving scholarships. Yep. And so, also, all the students going there, families had to say non disclosure agreement, so they can't yeah. talk about the school at all. Yeah, and the same thing for the staff. Mm -hmm. um, so, and and also they had uh, an executive. Um, what do I you think, think an about executive that? chair that left uh, like a month before they started the school year. Yep. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like that's, for, it's not like this is a new school year for a school that's already been around. I feel like that type of stuff might happen if you're trying to literally functionally create something from scratch. Like people are going to come and go early on as you figure out who you are and the mess in the type of school you're going to be. 
Like with any business, right? Like not everyone's going to fit the mold, so I think people will come and go. My, my main question here is like, do we think that this is a, a good thing for our educational system in general? I'm not sure because I would believe in it more if it tried to mirror classical education rather than um, But I thought that's kind how we got like, in this problem to begin with, was classical education's a problem here right now. Well, no, because classical education has been ditched for a uh, modernist, like, reimagined version. That's, um, I mean, there's a lot of history to that. John Dewey is a relevant figure in in how we got to where education is at today. So it says right here, it says, uh, when it says who we are, it says to be a reflection of God's glory in the world. And then Donder Rule 58, which says writing should be regarded as an activity that necessitates critical thinking, an aspect that is fundamental to all good writing. There's a, apparently a rule, uh, like a mm. list of many rules for this school that we don't have access to yet. Minimum 12 58. 12 students yeah. per, grade, per class, 10 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Mm -hmm. does, uh, does that, is that up? To, I mean, that seems very low to me. Like, yeah, which is it's preferable to have a low yep. teacher. So rule ratio. 51 says students. And by the way, I'm reading now rules for I, don't, I have no idea where the hell rules one through four, 50 and what and 52 through 57 are. But I have rules 51 and 50. And there could here. be even more than 58. Yes. So it says students must be confident in forming ideas. If not, their writing will suffer. And it says Donda in a day. It says each day Donda students learn fundamentals, grow in their faith, and experience two enrichment classes, full school worship, core classes of language, arts, math, and science, lunch and recess. Well, I'm glad he's not getting rid of recess. Power to Kanye for that. Let's Thank go. you. <laughs> uh, boys especially need recess because, you know, one of the reasons that school is so bad for, for, for young men is you're like, uh, they're putting them on Ritalin and Adderall because you're locking them in a room for eight hours and then getting... Uh, harsh shocked, fluorescence. shocked when they're like, I can't sit still. What is yeah. the problem here? So, uh, so world language, visual. Uh, they uh, they also add visual arts, film, choir, and parkour. I want to go and see a parkour class at Donda Academy. Yeah, they've also got a basketball team for which they've um, attracted some of the top players in the country, uh, high school age players. I mean. Yeah. All, from all around, and they're housing them in luxury apartments. I find that suspicious because if you can't get accredited and hold them up to certain academic standards, mm -hmm. then you're not actually going to prepare them to become college athletes or professional athletes at all. Yep. Uh, so oh. really, like, you need to have a focus on the whole formation of the students. I also want to point out that he kind of, like, they, they talk about how he's like, he hasn't read any book, which is not true. Kanye West was like, uh, I, I had it up here because as, as soon as I read that, I was like, that rings false to me. And I had to re-look up and just make sure I wasn't crazy. It says, after graduating from high school, West received a scholarship to attend Chicago's American Academy of Art in 1997 and began taking painting classes shortly after. He transferred to Chicago State University to study English. So he may have dropped out, what? but my guess is at least one book got read in there somewhere. somewhere. In there. I also yeah. like the part where he says that he doesn't read all of text messages. He reads just the first sentence and the last sentence. I think I'm going to try that someday. But that right. seems very dismissive and rude. That's how they teach you to do the SATs. Is what? Like you read the first, you read the first two sentences and the last sentence. Why? Because it, it's a time test. Mm. So it, it's like a trap. And it's supposed to be that the first two sentences have all the context that you need. And the last sentence like tells you where the next one is going. And everything in the middle is basically just filler. Yep. Hmm. Uh, I want to read something from the Rolling Stone article that goes okay. into the most detail. Uh, one person who worked with the school's culinary team said they were involved in developing, quote, Elevated high concept coffee, tea, and fruit focused beverages for kids, parents, and faculty. Think like distilled shikari coffee, shaved ice with milk syrup, they say. We led a food science class for the students as well, where the kids can learn the fundamentals of cooking. So it sounds like they're trying to also teach practical skills. I just hope that that's not at the expense of the core classes. Um, 
they're including those language arts math science um but it takes more than just having those classes to get accredited and i'm interested to see whether that will happen for them um because that is kind of fundamental if you're claiming to be a prep school you've got yeah. to actually prep them for college and you can't do that without accreditation um the f former executive director uh beulah mcloyd left uh and said that she moved on because of philosophical differences about the level of stability that is required to educate students in an effective way. She said, as an educator with over 22 years of experience in the field, I always put children at the forefront of any decision I make. Consequently, I moved on. This sounds like a bad sign for the viability of this This experimental mm. project like i see a huge emphasis on music they've got a choir well, I, I see mean, a huge emphasis on arts sports. academies are things yeah like, but kanye west is a businessman and an artist he's not an expert in education also, he's also not uh, he he might be sacrificing the practical for the like visionary aspect of the whole thing he has a big vision for it but he's not finding the people who can practically make it happen if this school was accredited and i had kids i i honestly would be pretty interested in having them experience at least a semester but don't you think the ndas are suspicious i do think the ndas are suspicious and but for me, the biggest thing is the non-accreditation because it's you're wasting your time, essentially. Mm -hmm. It says uh, they spoke of its unique programs for students, which have fashion courses, Japanese restorative justice instruction. That was interesting and to STEM me. What classes. does that mean? I don't know what no restorative idea. justice instruction is. Uh, but like, there's a lot of uh, platitudes being said. <laughs> like... Uh, and the website Tamar Andrews is a consultant for the academy and he said people choose to bring their kids to Donda Academy for a sense of privacy a sense of care a sense of concern a sense of love an environment of health an environment of wealth an environment of learning and putting God as a focus so that's a lot of great goals to have for the mm. school but who is actually going to bring this about and make it happen day feels to like day it feels like a very 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 ambitious thing to yeah. try and accomplish and that it will just take time but my guess is those first few classes will be guinea pigs of a sort as they work out the mm -hmm. kinks into what needs to actually go into making it work and well, that's true of a lot of private you know, schools and what like it starts me, out small yeah the, the the website in terms of functionality is simply not there and the the for example the the and this is because i used to maintain a website for the longest time in the section of how we learn the the when you click on it it's just kids on a board and you have to scroll down for any type of content and that's ridiculous like people when they click on something they expect to see their stimuli within five seconds and someone may click and Thank be like you. well I guess it's not here so and uh, I know the f I know for a fact that he knows about design, and if he knows about design, he must know about web design at least rudimentary. And this is some this is I don't think this knowledge shocks anyone. So the fact that the website is so lackadaisical and not mm -hmm. seemingly well thought out is concerning. Yeah, and the, it doesn't reveal much about what the school is actually doing. The air of secrecy about it is the most worrying part, mm -hmm. right. I think. Because if you're a private school, every private school that is uh, successful um, needs to be profitable as well. It is it is a company. It's a private company. Yep. And you need a marketing team. Like, that's something you can't overlook. Like, uh, you're selling a product to the possible students and parents. Well, they're kind of marketing it with the air of secrecy and on his name, honestly. Yeah. Everything but is based on enough. his name. But that's no, not, not enough. That's not enough. You no, need not. outcomes. I don't even know if they plan on doing standardized testing 
to prove that they can, you mm -hmm. know, create the the right outcomes for like in like intellectual formation and academic success, and not just. Um, also, is it in a crime not to have your kids at school? So if the school isn't accredited, and you have your kids in this school that's not accredited, like does that circumvent that law? Is I don't know. Well. I mean, a lot of people have switched to homeschooling in recent years, and you don't need uh, accreditation if you are privately educating your kids. You only need to prove that you are doing some kind of education. Yeah. You don't have to do the standardized testing, but that does hurt a student's ability to eventually get into college. Also, yeah. what do you think about him comparing himself to Moses? He did? Uh, so What's the exact way he Kanye said that? West wipes social media after bizarre comparisons to Moses from the Bible. It says no one asked how Mo no one asked Moses how much he slept in a in a story post. Uh, he also hinted that he may not be sleeping much, sharing texts to Instagram and an apparent dig at those around him. Do you think that's him comparing himself to Moses? Yeah, it sounds like something said in a manic state though. Yeah. What what uh, like what would that comparison be? I I have no idea. I guess you know. What's fascinating? Be feeling like he's a leader of okay, yeah, yep. some he's, group of people that's been exiled from the rest of society. Perhaps he's a leader uh, of men. And, I don't know. And for me, what fascinates me about Kanye, because on the surface level, honestly, I shouldn't be the guy that's fascinated by him, but I truly am. And it's that he is a person that still dares to dream. He's a person that still dares to think. And say what you will, he is an artist. Yep. And of the very few remaining, because I feel that artists now are products. And he is an artist. And that is what fascinates me. And it's also like n no one ever tell him that. But this is what also fascinates me about Shane is that like he's clearly an artist. Okay. And do you t keep going. He and he has a no, and I mean it. But and, and he has a vision, and it's an interesting one. And he, uh, his, his book, the I can't say the word, the effing lunatic. Yeah, it's really an interesting book. That's a time capsule of a period in time, and it makes me feel like I'm in exactly that time again, which it, it's incredible for for art to do that. And are you guys gonna have? Uh, assuming you have kids, you're gonna homeschool. Mm. I would I if I had to, and if I had to, that means there's nowhere else to go. To go, yeah, which is probably going to be the case. Yeah, I, it feels that way more and more. Maybe it's like a little bit of like being blackpilled from seeing everything that somebody like James Lindsay posts about how awful the educate, or even Project Veritas and all the stuff that they post about education. It's very disheartening to see. I applaud any efforts to try to repair that system or yeah. be even a small part of of. Helping. Recovering it, yeah. but what I'm afraid of in this instance is that because Kanye West is an artist and a visionary of sorts, like maybe a vision is all he has so far, and that's not enough to actually get the outcomes these kids deserve. Yeah, absolutely, yep. you know. We'll see. And he's. They say that he has had this idea for a long time. He always wanted to create a school in his mother's name. Um, they're focusing a lot on these magnet talents, yeah. like music, sports, um, fashion even. But you've got to focus on the fundamentals just as much. And with their staffing issues, it doesn't seem like a proper focus is being put on that. I guess also like the, the next step would be to wait and see if any type of accreditation comes out of this. And then maybe then you can take a, a yeah, we'll find forward. out in spring. Yeah. yeah That's when hear. they're scheduled to, to look at the school. Hopefully they've like kind of gotten into the swing of things by then. Yep. I didn't hear anything about history either. Yeah. No. seems like an important one. We will that should be one of the core classes. Yeah. Before also, you get to like cooking classes, actual and stuff bring like back that, civics. You know? Like they don't teach civics in school anymore. No. Mm -hmm. So I, they just don't have the staff that they need. It sounds like the like the the lack of like uh, a lot of people think that that was on purpose, right? That the reason like that where a lot of people are so lost 
uh, politically now is that they just don't teach you how the government works. So people are easily fooled if, they, if they're never taught about how government actually works. You know what else they don't have as a Christian school? They don't have any religious studies. I think well, they, they said, said they had no, a they? of worship. Did. Yeah, they did. Well, they have worship services, but that's not the same thing as a religious studies course. It isn't. Um, like they do Sunday service, which also requires NDAs, by the way. Now Mary's, that. now Mary's, uh, the gears are turning. really up there now. She's like, eh, that's a problem. Like they don't have a biblical studies course. It seems, I mean, who knows? We're not allowed in there and we don't know any of the details. We so should, maybe we, we should, do. We should put you, we should <laughs> send you in undercover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. I'll pretend uh, to be one of the high school yeah, students. Yeah, you you totally could. Or I could like bring my my fake three year old child to the no, preschool. No, no, one no. One of the super chats has already devised a plan. Oh. Really? Yes. Well, let's then let's go to super chats. Okay, let's go. Chakti Platy said, "If you clone Mary, program her to return cards." Um, that I'm, implies I'd be like an android. Android Mary just, Android it sounds like a Mary's. band. Android Mary sounds like a band <laughs> to me. Would you be in a band called Android Mary if your name was uh, wasn't Mary? It sounds rather poetic. Yeah. Dane, start a band with me called Android Mary. You know it, babe. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> Thousand foot deep end said, "I thoroughly regret asking for a B day <laughs> shout out." Well, Why? you know, it, Why? We, we are nothing if not fantastic at making people regret their decisions. Happy here birthday, bro! On, on on pop culture crisis, but thank you again for the for the chat and happy happy birthday. Javi J said, "It's a little late, but Mary is a competent commentator. Brett being easy on the eyes is just <laughs> a plus." Uh, can you read that part, Dane? Um, I'd have to scroll up. Sorry. He also said, y'all have been frost uh, bitten. Como va mi boricua? What does that mean? What's up, my boricua? Oh. Crushes my soul. Frost bitten is yes, clever. That is very... Uh, Unless she came up with it, then never mind. Then yes, then she's just uh, <laughs> branding. <laughs> I need to stop watching YouTube said classic ed been replaced with... Oh, classical education has been replaced with postmodernism. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, classical education. What I mean by that is just um, the the trivium, which is you start with well, really you first start with phonics, then you go to grammar, and then you go to logic, and then you go to rhetoric. So that's what I went through in my private mm. education, um, and that can be secular or religious education, really. But it doesn't seem like that's what they're going for. They're going for more of a magnet school structure. Whatever you do, um, use me as your uh, cautionary tale to not go through public education. <laughs> no, I, you turned out great. I am here. I am here to 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 caution all against. You turned a, out great in spite of it. Uh, How about uh, that? Uh, uh, like, if you do, you will end up like me. You will uh 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 your way through life, and it will be a problem. Especially if you get a job talking. You can be president, apparently. Especially if you get a job talking for a living. You talk good, Brett. Uh 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 uh. I'm gonna make a song. You talk real good. You talk really good. You talk good, and you read good. No, no, no. Goodly even. The the reading part, I've just accepted. Right, like some of it, some days, <laughs> some days it's on. Some days I can read very, very well. Other days it looks like I never woke up for a day, a day of school in my entire Dude. life, and it looks like I'm. I gotta I'm, say, like in school, when someone would read, a, like from whatever book we were reading, and they did it this slowly, I lost my freaking mind. Dude, there was this guy in my bachelor's degree. His name was Frank, and he just read so beautifully. <laughs> I still Thank remember you. it to this day. Wow. It, see, it bothers me because also you speak in a more deliberate tone. I speak very, very fast and annoying. And it's <laughs> I like, don't think it's that, annoying. That's our balance. Talk fast. That's our balance that you speak more deliberately. I speak more fast and more fast. See, it's a problem. Quickly. Quickly. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's just, it's just I, I, I can't change that. You know, like it's too far embedded. In, like it used to be faster. Like I actually have to wow. reel it back in. So it is what it is. Action Man said Hobby Lobby actually had a piece of the stone tablet of the Epic of Gilgamesh in their possession. I just want to know how and why. Um, the real what? question is. Uh, <laughs> how do you even know that? It's crazy. Have, I, I have met the. Here's a fun fact. Okay. I used to live by Hobby Lobby, right? Okay. And 
on more than one occasion, you're coming out there at the Hobby Lobby. It was right next to a Walmart, okay? It was one of the Walmarts that wasn't open 24 hours. So around 11 p.m., you know, all sorts start to roll out of the Walmart. And I'd be coming back from skating, and I'd be going by the Hobby Lobby, and this lady would come by, and she'd say, my phone is locked in my car. Can I use your phone? Um, she didn't look like she had a car. She, she, she didn't look like she had a phone. Interesting. And you had to be very diligent about, you know, like, hmm, you know, your, your instinct is to be very polite and to say, yes, I would love to let you use my phone. But you're like, how about I hold on to my phone and call someone for you and I hold it up for you on speakerphone. Oh. No, uh, I need to. Uh, it's a private conversation. I'm like, well, then you can't use my private phone. Uh, and, and Street smarts, Brad. And then she would. And then I kid you not. A week later. She tries the exact same thing again in she, the same place. <laughs> I mean, she might try it every night, but I just happen to see her like a week later. Well, because she doesn't remember that you were one of the people she tried exactly. it on. So it just, uh, I, I imagine how many poor gentlemen had their phone oh, no. taken because they were just being too polite to the lady who... What, she just takes it and runs? And runs, I guess. Anyone can chase you down. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, I guess I you just, can't call the cops on her if you don't have your phone. Exactly. Anymore. What are you supposed to do? Like, <laughs> uh, and to this day, I imagine she's still there at Every night day. taking Every someone's night. phone. Yeah. Wonder if she ever found her car. <laughs> I would be like, show me that you have car keys. Exactly. <laughs> Caper 2X said an idea peeps. Send Mary in pigtails undercover to the school. Dane can be your dad. Hannah Claire as the school librarian. Brett plays a vid visiting scholar. I want to be the gym teacher. You want to be the gym I teacher? I want to be the gym teacher. I want to Maybe be you can teach the kids how to skate. I will wear I will wear um, a tracksuit, and uh, or or uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the the other one that they wore in the eighties. What's that stuff called? No, I'm your dad. What? No, I'm your Never dad. Mind. What did they wear in the eighties? Uh, uh, not a tracksuit, but. Um, Windbreaker. I'll wear a windbreaker tracksuit. Oh yeah. Have you ever seen that meme? It's like the family. It's like seven. It's like seven family members. Oh, all, a leisure suit. Uh, and they're they're all wearing like these eighties like purple and in, in neon yellow windbreakers. And it says the it says the wind never stood a chance because everyone <laughs> in the family is wearing one. But before that, they had the leisure suit. Right? Yes. Maybe I'll wear that uh, as a, as the gym teacher. <laughs> I need to stop watching YouTube, said Kanye just wants fans, uses Christianity as a tool. I, I, I don't want to call the dude on his, I, I can't know what his faith or his beliefs are, but I would like to. I think I, he's I like genuine, he but um, his vision needs to be. Uh, Better thought out. Yeah, like narrowed down and people who are more like have skills that he doesn't have need to be in, more involved and he needs the right staffing for it simply fiend v said wrongly imprisoned i'm not gonna say that <laughs> i was wondering if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, uh hold off on that one so they, they're channeling bad app today apparently yeah and like i'm sorry guys you just can't be bad app it's very hard there's a certain no charm about him. bad app that it's very hard to it's very hard to, to at match. least he's funny <laughs> Caper2x said, agreed with Brett 100%. Bring back civics. Yes. Bring back Honda civics. Bring back Honda <laughs> civics classes. They haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> They're still out there. High Voltage 75 said, Halloween is on Monday this year. You guys going to dress up for the stream? Any costume ideas? Halloween's for kids, guys. What day is it? Dane. Let Halloween. children have Stop it. Stop hating on the fun. I'm not hating on the fun. We're going to at kids. least do something special for Halloween. I'm going to dress up as a podcast host. I'm gonna wear a long T-shirt and a backwards hat. And you're uh, not gonna get dressed up. I don't, I don't know what I would wear. What would I? What would I wear? Garth from Wayne's World, maybe. That'd be fun. I'm gonna dress as my a, hair is blonde. A main guest house. Yes, yes, that's what we will dress you <laughs> up as. Uh, we'll just get you a wig and make you guys. Up let us Ian. know what costume shoot we should have for this Monday show. Super Troopers. Could you be Ian? Super Troopers. Could you be Ian? Of course, no one can be Ian, dude. <laughs> you have to well, shave. What a ridiculous statement. You have to <laughs> shave. Hell no. All right. You'd be a crystal chick. <laughs> Whoa. Nathan Settlemeyer said, Brett, speak mo good. <laughs> it's uh, Brett, uh, Brett, 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 Brett can't, 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 can't speak well. Just doesn't do it well. Can't speak, not know how to speak. Brett in the King's speech. 
Cyber Doctor said, Frostbitten is a video of Chrissy Meyer impersonating Frost. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Please that. Please react to it. I forgot about that, yeah. Can that, we react to that? I, I don't think it was on an episode of, of Friday Night Tights, but it was on one of their streams where she where she does like a Frost impression. Hmm. Uh, maybe really? we'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Okay. All right, uh, before we... Uh, I, I do want to do Podluck, and I do want to talk about the Women King, the Women King ever, so, uh, ever so quickly here, guys. Uh, we're not going to spend a bunch of time on this, but basically there was a lot of boycotts for the woman King because they avoided, or they at least, um, they glossed over the, uh, background of the tribe in question. What, what, what? Got you a new super chat. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that says, uh, there are calls to boycott the film and basically they go into it and they talk about how, uh, the, the tribe in, in question, which was the Dahomey, was uh, basically, right? Did I pronounce that right? It was like, I mean, four, we wouldn't know if yeah. you hadn't. 450,000, uh, mem- they, they sold 450,000 people into the slave trade, to the North Atlantic slave trade. Uh, and they, they're mad because the film glossed over it. It actually doesn't really bother me because it's not portraying itself, as far as I know, as being 100% historically accurate. But it is funny to watch them kind of gloss over this stuff and pretend like it's not a thing. I mean, I'm surprised that anyone called for a boycott over this because there's already a concerted effort to distract from those historical facts anyway. Supply is not meeting the demand. Well, it's it's also it's one of those things where it's like I can kind of respect the people who were like, if you're like one of the super woke Twitter people and you're saying that this is a problem. I can respect the consistency, right? That you're not just picking and choosing what battles to fight. Uh, I have not seen the movie yet. Uh, I know the fact that, that the, the the tribe in question was brutal, and that they 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 killed women and uh, they killed women. Uh, they they killed elder the elderly, and then they took the children and sold them off into slavery. And then from the other thing that I found out was like it said that they didn't just. Um, they didn't just slay like trade enemies, meaning that they actually went on raids to uh, villages that were not militarily inclined uh, and took them for slavery too. So there's a, a pushback in the industry. The thing so, is, like, what does a boycott accomplish? It doesn't you accomplish know, anything. That's what I'm saying. Thing, I, if anything, go see the movie, and if you're armed with the with the knowledge of what happened. Uh, in history to this event that just arms you all the better to be able to criticize it but I don't see any problem with the movie getting made I take more of an issue with uh, Viola Davis telling you that if you don't go see this movie you're racist and pro- and projecting the opinion that uh, you believe that black women can't be uh, can't lead the box office which is patently absurd I she mean said that? <laughs> she said that I don't think that boycotts accomplish anything but it should be pointed out that they are being hypocritical and the marketing of the movie is oh, being yeah. framed as woke where they're valorizing a tribe that was a key player in human trafficking. Yep. Sold, uh, sold as, to the French. And, and it's only because they had uh, female warriors. Yeah. Well, Just because those female warriors were brutal doesn't mean that they're praiseworthy. And in, the, and in this, they talk about how they, they, they gloss it over. They, I guess there's a line in the movie where she says like that slavery is like one of the people says slavery is wrong. So they are absolutely um, yeah, like rewriting this, history. This historian said they were a key player in the trafficking of West Africans between the 1680s and early 1700s, selling its captives to European traders whose presence and demand fueled the industry and in turn the monumental scale of Dahomey's warfare. Yep. So, quite literally, it's rewriting history. Which is like... And uh, people watch this movie ignorantly thinking that it's made to be historically accurate. Dude, and also on, uh, 98% on the tomato meter. Not believable. Like this but movie... Critic say, or audience score? You're saying this movie is as good as The Godfather. Mm. Wait, is that the critic score or the audience? The, the audience uh, score. No, tomato meter... Tomato meter? No, it's not the audience score. It's the other one. The critic The critic score. Yeah. Obviously. Also, I want to point out <laughs> that this is one of those things where, um, <sighs> like, yes, this is um, on the level of Memento, The Godfather, just one of the cin- great cinematic masterpieces. I'm surprised it got made at all, like, just because of these comparisons being made. But they, I really do think they heard female warriors and then, like, stopped paying attention. It's after the same. That. It's, a, in a way, the same theme that we were talking about earlier, which is just taking the worst, uh, behaviors that are stereotyped as specifically male Mm -hmm. 
And when a woman does it, it's heroic. Yep, of course. So any brutality or any dehumanizing practice, if women do it, it can be valorized, mm -hmm. and yep. that's okay. Why do you think that it is? That we, why, uh, I mean, I, if you had to guess as to an actual reason as to why you think that's going on right now, why do you think that is? Is this just the result of feminism? I guess it's feminism? because you can't find uh, anything about women that, like, you find genuinely beautiful or praiseworthy. You have to look for ways that they've imitated the worst pitfalls of masculinity. Yep. Right? Like, it can only be a negation of women that can be praised the other the one that it says says it's like asking uh jews to watch a feel-good movie about the nazis that was one of the well there's that, actually one of those coming up uh, yeah. uh where margot robbie plays an ss officer that oh, realizes yeah. the error of her ways yep. and sets out after world war ii to go and uh serial murder her former colleagues. I, I think that something that I, I saw earlier is I think the most damaging genre that we're going to see more of, and I, I really do, is uh, do you know what? Uh, it's like alternative history. It's like alt history. So it's like science yeah. fiction, like with the man, uh, the man in the high castle, mm -hmm. uh, where they basically take like a, it's like a what if scenario, like what if this yeah. had happened? And as we become increasingly, Doctor Who did that. Yeah, as we become increasingly connected more to media than we do to our actual education, that's going to be weaponized, kind of like uh, uh, I imagine there's at least one person who watched Anne Boleyn and didn't realize that that wasn't <laughs> accurate to history, right? Uh, Much more than one, sadly. So it's yeah. like, I think that this will end up being a genre where people will end up conflating those arguments or those things happening in later yeah. uh, in history. But it's a long play. It's, they're not uh, counting on it affecting people now. They're counting on it and affecting people two, three generations down the line as that media becomes ingrained in the public consciousness. I like this tweet. It said, let's be honest. It's a movie about an African tribe famous for selling slaves to Europeans that was made into a female empowerment story by two white woman writers. Yep. You don't have to be very woke to see the problem here. And Maria Bello, bless her soul, is is one of the the wokest there is. Uh, but she's also bless her soul. Bless her soul. But she was also <laughs> in the underrated classic Coyote Ugly. So I I, ah, I weigh those. I see. I weigh those next to each other, and she's like she should be down here. She ends up somewhere clear closer to the middle uh, <laughs> because she gave Violet the second chance in Coyote Ugly. So. I want a marathon of Brett. Brett movies. Oh yeah, it's uh, yeah, like yeah, pay for that man. It's they're that good. It's what is it? Coyote Ugly, Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars is a TV show that wouldn't be on there. That's not even on my it's, list of. It's not Pretty Little Liars isn't on your top hundred list of TV series, which is still in the works, by the way. You better add it right now. Maybe it is. I don't know. Okay. Wow, you have an actual list. No, he's writing an actual list. I have told him that he needs to write a list of the top 100 TV shows and top 100 movies. Is House in there? Loved House by there. Brett You're freaking Gassovic. Schmo. Of course he would. And it's not even supposed to be like actually a, like a list of the objectively best TV shows. No, screw that. That's Only lame. House what started does Brett really Dasovic love? Yeah. House That's started really good and it know. got super bad. Who cares? Most saying. of this list isn't all. It, there's no such thing as a hundred or so greatest list of shows that ended perfectly. Right. These are just they, they're, breaking bad. If they have anything to offer, yeah, but that's not even if it's not just a the first those. season. Yes, if there's it deserves least, to be on the list. Exactly. If there's at least one good season, it is on the list. Breaking Bad Two, Electric <laughs> Boogaloo. Let's make it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it, Jesse. Yeah, you got to play that song. It's like, do you want to start a meth lab? I saw it for the first the, time the uh, on Saturday. The song. Yeah. Like, do you want to do you wanna start all that meth lab? Let's make a meth lab. It's fantastic. <laughs> all right. So so the point of it is, is that Hollywood is going to keep revising and revising and revising and you're never going to get yeah. anything out of it's it. It's just but, perfect that two awfuls wrote it. Yep. Uh, and then before we go, I got two more things. I want to talk about that. There is an announcement for a new Karate Kid movie that has unfortunately nothing to do with with Cobra Kai. It's suck, How ben. stupid could you possibly be? It's very suck. stupid. When Cobra Kai is widely loved. Yes. It rules. All the original Karate Kid movies obviously loved. And even the Jaden Smith film generally mm. liked, at least. I don't know. I mean, that's, It was before things got really woke. That sounds like revisionist history to me, yeah. but I could be wrong. I don't it was generally like popular and liked at the time. Jack and it was also in like 2011, so they didn't really have the same impetus to like destroy the IP that they have now. Yep. And so, now they do, and they're 
going to do exactly that as that's what I fear. It really was Ghostbusters, right? Sony, yes. In the Last Jedi, 2016. In the Last Jedi, you know Wesley is a big fan of the Last Dude, Jedi. I, I, I was watching yeah. the and on he the gave, Friday episode. Look, well, he he's like he's like I don't have to explain. And it. And he, he got flamed for he it. Got, it. People people well weren't deserves. happy, but I appreciate him for standing sticking by his guns. And you know I I do believe I do believe that there is like this desire for people like you're allowed to like certain things and you're not allowed to like other things. And people are like oh no you can like whatever you want until you tell them something that you like that they think is really bad, then all of a sudden that goes out the window. I say, if you like it, you like it. That's I respect fine. him for having a different opinion. It just disgusts me. <laughs> what do You're, you want me, what, do you want what, me to say? What was the Shane Cashman quote? Oh, yeah. Um, something, something, but your reality is, is disgusting. disgusting. Yeah. What was it? Basically. That so, mo- movie's horrible. I don't know if anybody here watching today has any great interest in watching a, Cobra, a Karate Kid movie that's not connected to Cobra Kai. Maybe. Considering that everyone connected to Cobra Kai is part of the original project. Who the hell are they going to get for? A, is it going to be a reboot? Oh, God. I'm telling you, stop it. Stop it. It's Maybe they're going Lizzo. to recast uh, Daniel figure <sighs> again, the way they did with Jaden Smith and just recontextualize the whole thing all over again. But yep. like, you know, at some point it runs out of juice. How could they make like, it? How could they actually make it? Make they're it just going to beat it. <laughs> They're like, gonna do it with Lizzo. It's gonna be like, over, oh it's my gosh, dead horse. You don't gotta be in shape to do a karate. And that's just. <laughs> oh my oh god! No. If they made, if they made, like, well, they already did a female <laughs> karate kid, yeah. right? Uh, well, the, yeah, in the later one of the later movies. What was that actress? I don't saying? remember. Uh, the chick in the Million Dollar Baby. Um, it's the the girl that no one can decide whether she's hot or not. She's not. It's been decided. It's like, what was her name? I'm looking it up. Hillary Swank. Yes, Hillary Swank. Is she not? Is she not beautiful? I mean, it's I mean, a highly debated topic. Beauty is subjective. But anyway, that w- has been like the only certified flop in the Karate Kid universe so far. My favorite are the people that look like. I, have you ever seen those actors? They look like an old version of a young person or a young version of an old person. Is Hillary Swank one of them? Uh, they're, they're like, you can't tell if they're like a 40-year-old playing a 15-year-old or a 15-year-old playing a 40-year-old. There's yeah. people like that. She's not one of them, but there's something wrong. She just looks like like well, kind of Julia Roberts-esque. Dude, I, I haven't the, watched her Karate Kid. I'm just saying it's the actually, only one that genuinely flopped. Look at this. Hey, t- she looks like double. Annabeth Gish. It below says celebrity doppelgangers. And look at those two absolute smoke shows. And then look at her. It's like, come on. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> she looks. She looks like an actress named Annabeth Gish, but Annabeth Gish is older than her. Mm. So, uh, I have no desire personally, but that's because I ranted earlier about how I think that nostalgia should be abandoned in all its forms, and I, you can't go back. But, but that's just nostalgia me. is why Cobra Kai was made. So clearly, you can get it right. Th- that's f- on accident. Fine. The, the, yeah. What? Okay. The let's put it this way: the odds are not in their favor right. for it to actually work out. Yeah. It's just not. And before we go, we're going to talk about Womp Womp Womp, which is that She-Hulk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, She-Hulk, ratings in the gutter, first Marvel show not to make the top 10. Go figure. Nobody wanted to see She-Hulk twerk. That's Top 10 on its platform or uh, just? On, on um, Nielsen rating uh, systems. Okay. So basically they have it here. Uh, it couldn't even come in top 10. Number one was Day Shift. This is from August twenty. Or I'm sorry, August fifteenth to the twenty first. Uh, the Sandman, Stranger Things, Never Have I Ever, NCIS. Dude, NCIS is in like season nine thousand, and real. still like there are shows like that. And um, what's the 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 medical show? That Criminal Minds. No, no, that one's that one's Grey's Anatomy. Back. Grey's Anatomy. Like they just they will they will literally uh, or Law and Order SVU. They are functionally television versions of vampires. They will go on forever. Dude, Grey's yeah. Anatomy is freaking horrible. Still on the air. It's super. Irres- Even in its early days, it was awful. It's right? super irresponsible doctors, and all their patients die. It's like awesome. I had sex with the other doctor. Uh, my patient died on the next episode. I was supposed to be giving uh, performing surgery, but I was too busy having sex with the other doctor. It's pretty much. <laughs> it's just that's the show. So it's like nobody cares. Nobody cares about She-Hulk. Everything that I've watched, like the the only people that I know that are actually watching it are hate watching it. Yeah. I can't bring that's myself to hate. That's the only passion that's behind it is the passionate hatred people like, have for it. I've been getting people who like message me like continuity errors in it. 
like this stupid thing happened in this episode, which contradicts this thing that happened in this episode. I'm like, you're putting more thought into it than these than the writers did. Like you're hurting. Like they don't yourself. even know that those continuity errors exist. You're let hurting, alone care. You're also, hurting yourself by by like putting yourself through this. Yeah. Also, who cares about the actual She Hulk? Never mind this one. Like the, the actual She Hulk. No one cares. She Hulk in the comics was actually fairly popular. The John Byrne run of She Hulk was very very popular. It was. Yeah, that's why she wasn't in any other movies. He's like, I'm going to need you to fact check that. For real. Like, like, it's, speaking of revisionist history. Well, did that character get... Uh, sources say. Like, did that character amass a huge fan base from no. it? A decent enough fan base. Uh, mo- uh, enough mean, to say that it's not a complete waste <laughs> to make like offshoots of other characters, whereas most okay. of the time that doesn't work. This is one of the rare examples where it did work one time on one run. Yeah. So. I'm not watching it. I don't care. But I am... Uh, we're also watching... Uh, Thank you. Thank you. I actually, um, I, I caught up on uh, House of the Dragon last night up through episode four. Oh, yeah. Is it good? It's, it's good. I mean, the like I said, the gratuitous sex and stuff I don't really care for, but that's just my personal opinion. A lot of people like that stuff. I don't. But in general, uh, it's it's all right. You save that for Coyote Ugly? Yes, I do. I save that for Coyote. I got to say, that's one of the reasons I liked Top Gun Maverick is that they... Had one scene where Tastefully sex was done. merely implied Tastefully and you go done. straight to pillow talk scene. Like, cut. Please, can we have more of that? Hollywood is awful at show don't tell, except for when it's gratuitous nudity on scene. That's when they're good at it. They, yeah. sh- they always know how to show. Suspicious, huh? Very, very weird how that works. Convenient, maybe. Two super <laughs> chats. Nathan Settlemeyer said, Dane, green eggs and ham or blue waffles? Dane, answer the question. French toast. All the way. What? All the way. His answer is just yes. Lane said, "Boycotts do nothing." Is antithetical to vote with your do- with your dollar. It's not enough to support good culture if bad culture is supported substantially more. Um, I disagree. I don't know. Uh, I just choose like I understand like the concept historically of- when has a boycott actually affected the mega yeah. corporation in question? <laughs> if we boycott Disney Plus. Does that mean that it's still not yeah. one of the biggest streaming platforms and will be for decades? I guess like, the idea that you could affect change that way, but I don't feel that. I personally don't feel that boycotts work that way in current year. Vote with your dollar works. Maybe but, if it's a matter of just your conscience, yeah, boycott yeah. it. If it makes you feel gross to support a certain company or show or movie, yeah. then boycott it, sure. But it's not. Don't think that it's actually going to affect them financially walmart plus is the only option it's the only option <laughs> the only it's voodoo in walmart plus that's where we're going also i, I would like Tubi. to I, yes uh, with that I, tv movie <laughs> i would like to know what an example in current years there, this there could be one i could just not be thinking of it where uh, a boycott of something has actually worked um i don't I mean, you you could argue that the pushback against the Star Wars franchise damaged the franchise in the later movies, uh, but I don't know if that's necessarily a boycott as much as it was just making an inferior product and then people coming to hate it. But um, I can't think of an example. Maybe I'm just a pat, bad podcast host, but I can't think of an example off the top of my head where a boycott really worked. Maybe refrain from hate watching something like yes. She Hulk. Vote just your because of your own mental health. Like, but it doesn't affect Marvel that you aren't watching She-Hulk. No, like, well, in, 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 the, in the sad fact is what's come become clear to me in recent weeks, or not even re- weeks, but months, but more so since the Critical Drinker released the video where he kind of defined what fan baiting was, that that is now a legitimate multi-billion dollar marketing strategy to use your anger. And we perpetuate this, unfortunately, just because we choose to talk about it and these things are interesting. When they make The Little Mermaid a different race and then people get mad and then they talk about it, it is free advertising for them. In It's part of an economy that we are absolutely contributing to, but it's now a guaranteed marketing tool that they are actively using. They would not choose to do it otherwise. They, That's what they did with Rings of Power, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I don't know if I necessarily believe that uh, that vo- that uh, boycotts work, but I do believe that vote with your dollars the best thing you can do for your own mental health and if you want to send a message. And hate watching doesn't work, and let me tell you why. Because your views will not get distinguished because oh he watched it but he didn't like it. Yeah, you know they they don't know. 
like Netflix or whatever, they take reviews off. They don't care. Did you? They're just yeah. gonna put you in the aggregate. Did you see the Dragon Ball Z movie when it came out? Hell no. No. Did they? Did they whitewash that character? I'll never they watch. They did, right? I'll never watch. That. I saw uh, uh, a meme this weekend. It was like I, th- I thought it was like Dragon Ball Z, and it was like clearly a white dude, and it said, uh, "I don't want to hear anything about the Little Mermaid." <laughs> And I was like, and I was like, I was going to respond because it's somebody I knew. I was going to be like, wrong. Both of these are stupid. You should not do it to either character. Uh, doing it once does not mean it's right when you do it again. But I was smart. I calmed myself down. And I realized that engaging over something this stupid is a waste of my Sunday. So You mean the I live action movie, Dragon Ball? Yeah. Hell no, dude. Yeah. I couldn't. Takti Platy said, I really like Avatar Last Airbender live action. I've you never- and... Like one no other? one else? Yeah, <laughs> like it, I have no opinion on it. Is that the one that... Uh, if you watched it, you would. Is that the one that <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan made? Yeah. yeah. Which is weird because he is like so hit or miss. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's like, the definition of hit or miss. I, he's made some movies I really love, but like what? it didn't follow the... It, it, you can just tell that like he didn't love that show because yeah. it doesn't follow the spirit of it yep. at all. Um, Walker Texas Danger said wanted to say that this is my favorite show on YouTube full stop I've never been dialed in on pop culture but I love your conversations thanks for giving me something to look forward to when I'm bored at work that is like the nice I, I love thank that, you I love that stuff I, I irrationally I love that stuff more than like n- like <laughs> knowing that people actually like really enjoy the show it like helps a lot with doing the work and it's a big like compliment it is if you aren't even like into pop culture but you watch it us just because you like listening to our takes on things like that's a huge compliment to us thank you so much crispy like transport llc said how do they keep getting these disney plus shows wrong when they can pull stories from the comics uh the argument to be made there is that the writers don't know how to adapt like adapting stories from comics it would actually take a certain amount of skill uh, mm-hmm. Adapting isn't the same thing as writing new, and, and I'm guessing that a lot of them it's just vanity, and they don't want to be un- they want to create their own work unencumbered from the pesky uh, history that is these gazillion dollar franchises that were built off the back of these great stories that were told in comics. These writers have the hubris to think that they can do better, which we're learning very clearly they cannot, which is funny. Mm-hmm. Have you seen it? Movie reviews said you guys are awesome. I'm a big fan of Timcast IRL and PCC. Watch both shows five days a week. Normally, don't get a chance to watch live. Are you guys interested in the Ty West X prequel Pearl by A24? I saw something about that earlier. I'm not a huge A24 dude or focused films, but uh, I do still. I, I still haven't seen um, everything everywhere all at once. And I need to get around to doing oh, that. Oh, me too. I I've really need to get to around that. to doing that. Like, it's one of those things. Like, there's, and I still have to see Bullet Train. Like, Bullet the, Train is a must see. One of the hardest parts about doing this job is like we have like there's so much to talk about that we don't have the time. Like, we, I think we've actually been doing better as far as reviews lately. Like, mm-hmm. we've done more than we were doing before. But it's like every day, it's like we come up here, we work for eight hours. I'm like, by the way, you got to go home and watch three hours of this, and we'll talk about it tomorrow and take notes and, and do this. But uh, I've also found that like like with skating for me, like quit the, the best thing that ever happened for me with skating was quitting all my sponsors because then I got to just skate to skate again. Like I loved the sport for what it was, not mm-hmm. like treating it like a job. Here it's like you movies have, to, have become that. You have to separate the two in, in a, yeah. a lot of the time. Like when I when I'm done with work, I go and watch old shows that I love because I have a hard time wanting to watch it because you feel like you have to. And I don't want that to seep into the content. I don't want to start coming into work like rah, 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 and be really grumpy about it just because you felt like you had to do it. So it's about finding a balance there between mm-hmm. the two. I need to stop watching YouTube said you're a great poop cast host. Y'all make work easy on me. Well, thank you. I think for the first part, yeah. uh, I'm not sure if that's both a, see, is that a compliment? Maybe uh, it's just hate on podcasting as a profession. I, and am I to understand that podcast is not owned by Apple? The term I, I don't, I believe it's a, it's no. a general term. What? Yeah. Like uh, some, if I, they own the entire term, that's They didn't even make dystopian. up the word. No, the, like, right. Like, cause uh, like they were talking about this in IRL one night and they were talking about like podcast. It's not like just cause iPod was a Adam thing. Curry, I think is the guy that invented the podcast. Wow. Dang. Hmm. Knowledge dropper. Who's that? Who the hell's that? I have no Digital idea. Digital marketing man extraordinaire. Hey, in fact, yeah, Adam here. Curry. They call him the pot father. Uh, Podfather? That's incredible. That's hilarious. That's incredible. Yeah, he rules. 
All right. Those are all the super chats. That's it. Dane, thank you so much, my friend. Hey, thanks you for were, having me. Dude, you were a great main guest host today. I try. Would you let he everyone know where they can find the main guest host today if they so desire? <laughs> at Ian Crossland on Twitter. <laughs> uh, at Dane Font on Twitter. On Twitter. Isn't right. he not even Ian Crossland on Twitter? Isn't he, he like is. worship Crossland on socials? Ah. I think on Instagram. See, he's fake like, fan. Damn. Fake Over here. fan. Actually, I might be the fake, fake fan. fan. I, uh, he's just worship Crossland on Instagram. I look that Mary, up. let everyone know where <laughs> they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Mary Archived, and whenever I post articles on TimCast.com, I promote them there. Do we have a fact check on that, Dave? At, at Ian Crossland. It's at Ian Crossland on yep. Twitter. All right. I or go corrected. to IanCrossland.net. I hear him say that all the time. IanCrossland.net. Worship Crossland at instagram why are we shouting out ian i have no I idea guys thank you so much for <laughs> tuning in today if you so desire you can follow me on instagram at brett dasovic for the show we are here monday through friday 3 p.m eastern standard time that is noon pacific and you can uh, join us in our funny hilarious conversations but all the ridiculousness going on in the world of popular culture and movies uh we are also on uh what are we on amazon music apple podcast pandora and spotify if you so choose to listen rather than watch on social media we are on twitter at pop culture under Score show Facebook and TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis and on Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. We will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Bye.